great American independent football. Today's game is brought to you by Rolling Rock Beer. From the Mountain Springs to you, same as it ever was. By Buick and your Buick dealer. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. By Gillette, the makers of Gillette Atra Plus Shaving System and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream. Together, the best a man can get. And by Isuzu, the first car builders of Japan. Good afternoon. For the first time in three days, it's not raining in the Piscataway, New Jersey area. We're live at Rutgers Stadium. It is homecoming at Rutgers University in a battle of two great American independents about to take place between Syracuse and Rutgers. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Steve Martin. Along with me, Bob Cassiola. Bob, I asked you this question back in August. I said, tell me who you feel the best team in the East is going to be this year. And I think we were both unanimous that it looked like it was going to be Syracuse. It sure was. Syracuse coming off a great winning season, bowl games, and a lot of success, national attention, national ranking, a lot of veterans returning in the offensive line, good running backs, receivers, defense. Everybody was excited about that team. But in the last few weeks, they've run a foul. They've got some problems, and they really have to put it together today. Looking at what has happened to them schedule-wise, they opened the season on a very successful note. They defeated Temple by a score of 43-3. Then they beat a very tough Army team. They survived that game with Army, winning 10-7. And then the bottom fell out in the next three very good opponents. Tough opponents. Pittsburgh, of course, beat them in a very big game at Pittsburgh, and Florida State came up to the Dome, broke their winning streak in the Dome, decisively beating him 41-10, and last week against Penn State, they got drubbed again, 34-12. You look at what made Syracuse successful in the years when Don McPherson was at quarterback and all of the other things that were in place at Syracuse, they had a very well-balanced offense. Right now, Bob, they don't seem to have that. They ran the option, they ran the freeze option, where the quarterback would dive the fullback inside, either give to him, come down, keep the ball, or pitch it on the corner. Three ways that they could attack the line of scrimmage. They haven't been able to do that this year because their quarterback has not done that. And what has come out to be is not an option at all, but really a tailback carrying the ball most of the time on the outside. And defenses are starting to think that way. I think the numbers are going to illustrate that as far as the imbalance in the Syracuse offense thus far this season. Rushing, you see 510 yards, passing over 1,000 yards. The total offensive output at 1,600 yards. But here again is the question of who's doing the damage. Michael Owens, the tailback, carrying the ball 75% of the time. That's not a balanced attack, and people know that. Owens is a great back, but he's really trying to do it all himself on the ground. And a great, a great wide receiver in Rob Moore has caught 45% of everything that the Bill Shar has thrown up. So if you're Rutgers defensively this afternoon, you've got to feel good. The game plan is, all right, if we can contain Michael Owens, and we contain Rob Moore, then we've got a pretty good sound defensive plan today. Exactly. They're going to try and cut off the corner, the perimeter. They're going to try and take the big play again away from Rob Moore, who is an outstanding athlete. If they can do those two things today, Rutgers Fields are going to be very much in the ballgame. Now, Rutgers has done everything in twos. They started out the season with two ties, then there were two wins, and then there were two losses. It's been kind of a roller coaster ride when you look at what Rutgers did. They started out with Cincinnati and Ball State, two games that I think they really treated as launching pads into the season, but it didn't work out that way. Didn't because they thought they could win those two games. As they started off, they felt those were two in the win column right from the start. But unfortunately, with all the fifth-year seniors they had, and they had as many as anybody in East, they thought they had it going for them. They came back, won a very thrilling game against Boston College in the Meadowlands, went out to the Midwest and beat Northwestern, but the last two weeks, they had a tough time with Penn State in the Meadowlands, losing 17 to nothing, and then gave up a lot of yards on the ground at Kentucky. They came from behind late, but couldn't make it all up. 33 to 26, they lost to the Kentucky Wildcats. Taking a look at Rutgers' offense, you find a distinct imbalance there, too, and a lot of that's intentional because of a great quarterback, Scott Ernie. Because of Ernie, but also because they don't have the tight end to do the blocking for him in the running game, so they've had to resort on Ernie doing great things with the pass, hitting his wide receivers, and also hitting his backs out of the backfield. And you see that when you look at the stats on this team offensively. Rushing yardage, 744 yards. That's just 34% of their total offense. The other 66% comes in the air, and the two guys that they depend on on the ground Two good running backs that will have to have a good day today, James Can and Mike Body. But when you look at their stats, 249 yards for Can, 226 for Body, that's not impressive totally when you think of how many games they've played and you look at what part the running offense plays in their minds as far as attacking people. And, of course, uh, Syracuse has one of the best pass defenses, sixth in the nation, and that's one thing that Rutgers is going to have to solve this afternoon. Kickoff coming up. Rutgers and Syracuse will have it for you right after this message. Welcome back. We're at Rutgers.
Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. As you see the geese fly in whatever direction is warm, because it isn't warm here this afternoon. The sun is deceiving. It was in the mid-60s yesterday. The temperature dropped dramatically overnight, and now we're down in around the 49-degree mark and a tough wind out of the south at 20 miles per hour. As you see the weather conditions, our sky conditions partly cloudy, but that wind will be a factor, and the coin toss being engaged upon at midfield is going to be uh, rather interesting to see who does what. Syracuse is going to defer and take the option here in the second half. And as you see, there is uh, uh, Rob Burnett and Terry Wooden has made the decision as far as the end of the field that they're going to defend. Made it very clear that they want the win. They want to get the win, perhaps pin uh, Rutgers down deep in their territory as you look at the wind blowing. That's coming right at you from the end zone as well. And as you see the overhead shot at midfield, it will be blowing from right to left across the screen, and it is dead across the field as we look. So that's going to be a factor in the first, and obviously Syracuse has made that decision to take the wind in the first quarter here at Rutgers. A big homecoming crowd. It'll estimated around 32,000, and they all came in late. They were out in the parking lot in their cars warming up, and now they're back down on the field and ready to go for football here today. A pivotal game for either one of these teams. Syracuse, as we said, at 2-3, and three, as you look at Dick McPherson in the middle of that huddle. And also, we should mention field conditions, Bob. It's rained here for three days. What does that do to this carpet out here? The carpet is, uh, is a, as we look at Dick Anderson getting his receiving team together, this grass field is in perfect condition. They did not have a tarpaulin on it, even though with all the rain we've had, they did not cover the field, but the field is dry. It's rather high. The grass has been let, uh, they've permitted the grass to grow, but it's a good track. It's very solid, and uh, I'm sure both teams will find it to be uh, equal as far as they're concerned and what they try to do running the football as well as throwing the ball. This is Syracuse's first game on natural turf. They play, of course, on their own Astro turf and the, the Carrier Dome and the other teams that they have had to play on the road have the artificial surfaces as well. When you look at the offenses of these two teams, Syracuse trying to execute the option and be multiple, and uh, Rutgers with their passing attack, does uh, a loose or a natural turf favor either one? Not really. I think it's the same for both. you got to remember they both practice on a natural turf when they're going to play on it, or they practice on an artificial surface if they're going to play on an artificial surface. And those days pretty much uh, are out of the picture. There's really no distinct advantage. Both of them have the facilities uh, uh, in their uh, in their training sites that they can handle both fields and they practice on both. So I don't think it's a factor. John Biscop, as you saw from Islip, New York, is the kicker for Syracuse. They will kick with the wind at their back and deep to receive. Going to be Ron Allen and Gary Melton for Rutgers. Allen will be at the bottom of your screen, and we're just about set to go for football action here from Piscataway, New Jersey. Visca puts a foot into it, and we're underway. Angling underneath at the goal line, that's Ron Allen. At the 5, off to the 10, off to the 15 to the 20, and he's brought down just shy of the 20-yard line. It's going to be a 20-yard return. And that's where we're going to come back. And Scott Ernie brings him out onto the football field. What a career he has had here at Rutgers. Hitting 52% of his passes in his career, which is a tremendous achievement. And 6,000 yards in passing. He's uh, thrown more interceptions than he has touchdowns, but these are career records that you're looking at across the board for Scott Ernie. First and 10, and he's working from his own 20. Body and Can are back in the eye. Handoff goes to Can. Jim James Can comes up over the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Brought down by Fred DeRitchie, the nose guard. And let's take a look at the offense for the Scarlet Knights. Of course, Scott Ernie's the chief operator, body the experience, fullback, Can, an excellent receiver out of the backfield. Syracuse go, uh, has to be wary of him. And up front, that's experience. All fifth-year seniors starting in that offensive line. Second down. Coming up, and we got a flag on the play right off the bat. It'll be second down and eight. Erda may be moving ahead of the snap. And this is going to go against Rutgers, apparently, as they, they talk with Dan Busey, one of the four captains for the Syracuse football team. Joe Shirk is the head, is the referee. Oh, no, it's going to be against Syracuse. Watch, watch on the screen. See Erda getting down, and Syracuse interprets that as his movement. Actually, he's getting down in his stance, and... Number 91, Rooks, jumps offside, and they called it against Syracuse. That's the young sophomore. Came into his own. Dick McPherson not happy with that change of affairs. It changes a second and eight to a second and three. And that means that a three down for Ernie. He's going to throw. And it's complete to Melton at the 44. 
and he gets out to the 47-yard line. Good job that time. Second down and three, they decide to throw the ball. It would be an obvious running down for most. They came out with three wide receivers. You see to this side, Melton, number 15, sits right in the center and comes into the seam behind the linebackers. You can see a lot of that. Here we go again. No huddle. No huddle whatsoever for Rutgers. They'll come out first and 10, one yard shy of midfield. Lone setback and four wide outs in the formation. Ernie with time. Looking downfield for McQueen. It's intercepted by Thompson at the 21-yard line. Rob Thompson, who picked off a pair of passes against Penn State a week ago, comes up with the interception. You can't do it any better, and that's haunted Scott Ernie all year. He comes in with 10 interceptions this season, 25 Thompson, 5 interceptions from a defensive standpoint. It's drop back action. He's looking up the right side of the screen for McQueen, number 5, and watch Thompson come over from the free safety position, times it per per perfectly, the ball hangs. Another interception for Thompson, who's 6th for the season, and Syracuse with a big turnover early in this game. Thompson came into the game, ranked 3rd in the NCAA in interception. This is Bill Shaw out of quarterback for Syracuse. 1st and 10 from his own 21, and he's back to throw. Over the middle, it is complete for his tight end, Andrew Dees, brought down at the 29-yard line. And the first man to bring him down for Rutgers looks to be Bob Spidell, the inside linebacker. Look at the number 25, Rob Thompson, the junior out of Southington, Connecticut. Now had six interceptions, third nationally, big play. We saw him do it in the opening game against Temple, and Scott Ernie is talking upstairs to Dick Curley, offensive coordinator. Coming up on second down and two for Syracuse. They're at their own 29-yard line. A gain of eight on the play. That's Carpenter in motion. And off goes to the fullback, Dwayne Kinnon, and he's got the first down over the 35 and brought down at about the 36-yard line. Again, Spidell in on the tackle and helping out Scott Miller, the defensive tackle out of Elmwood Park, New Jersey. But there's Kinnon. We talked earlier about the Syracuse offense and what they like to do as we look at their at 43, Dwayne Kinnon. That's their offensive lineup. Kinnon, the fullback, good out of the backfield, catching the ball from the wide receiver. Of course, Owens, an outstanding tailback and experience in that offensive line, perhaps regarded in the early season as one of the best offensive lines. First and 10, Syracuse, they're all 36. Here's Kinnon again. Kinnon straight ahead up over the 40-yard line. Nice gain out to the 41-yard line, brought down by Pat Udovich. Interesting, two carries first series for Kinnon. He comes into this ball game with only 36 attempts for 110 yards and a 3.1 average. There it is. So maybe they're going to try and feature him inside, run at Syracuse, keep them honest inside so they can eventually come on the corner with Michael Owens. Now George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator for Syracuse, told me, he said one of the things that has held the Orangemen back, lack of success on first down. They've been in too many second and long. They're second and six, and they fumble the football. Sharp covers up, and it'll be for a yard or two loss. There to make sure he goes nowhere is Scott Miller. So a two-yard loss brings up third and long. Just never stood in there and hung in with his center. The center moved away. Shar never moved with him. Consequently, the ball hit the ground. Fortunate to come away with it himself. So a big third down conversion coming up for Dick McPherson's club. In his ninth year at Syracuse. Two games shy of his 100th career coaching win. Includes his years at Massachusetts. That's D's in motion from the slot. Shaw back to throw over the middle. It is complete to his fullback, Kinnon, and it's going to be close to a first down. Udovich and Sellers on the tackle. Beautiful execution that time. Brought the tight end in motion across the middle of the formation. And when you see this, he draws the linebacker's attention. He picks up on Udovich and spied out. He comes across, and they take 40, they take uh, 43 Kinnon and bring him underneath that. So the linebackers have dropped off at the tight end. Here comes the fullback wide open in the middle. Good play, first down Syracuse. Needed seven, got eight. First and ten, three yards shy of midfield for Syracuse. Shar, deep hand off to Kinnon. Kinnon finds running room on the left side. That is going to be Owens going to the left side. His first carry of the day over the 50-yard line into Rutgers territory at the 44. He's brought down on the play. Look to be Elnardo Webster out of Jersey City. Oh, look at Dick Anderson. Elnardo Webster is a young player. They, he's inexperienced coming in this year. He's gained a lot of experience early in the season. They feel he's really come along. He's a tough kid, good size at 6'3", 225, and he's got to be careful looking for Mike Owens on a cutback all day today. Gain of five, second and five for Syracuse. No score. 
Play action for Shaw. Big rush is on. He'll have to scramble. Has some running room. Out at the 45, down to the 43. Pat Udovich, the man who brought him down at the 42-yard line of Rutgers. Uh, good outside pressure that time by Rutgers. Came on the flanks with Lester and Webster. Put pressure on the quarterback. Good adjustment by Bill Shaw to get out of trouble. Watch this. As they pocket him in here, you'll see the pressure coming from the left side. Of number 93, Webster coming in, forcing him. Just doesn't make the tackle. Good balance on the part of Shaw to get outside and make a gain out of it. One of the criticisms of Bill Shaw was that he was not as mobile a quarterback as they've been used to in that offense at Syracuse. But look, he needed five, and it looks like he's going to be very close to a first down. If you look over the shoulder of Bill Shaw, anxiously watching that measurement, it could mean another first down on this drive, and it's going to be first and ten for the Orange Man, who picked up this football down at their own 22 on an interception by Rob Thompson. And they've moved the ball steadily upfield since. We have 10.26 left to go in the first quarter. That uh, number is reflected in the number of sacks that have been experienced by Bill Shaw. And watch as he refers to his wrist. Look at the selection of plays that he has to go over. First down and 10. In Rutgers territory at the 42. Here's the option. Pitch to the corner to Owens, and he's right at the sideline and could go nowhere with it. He lost yards. Very interesting. They put the formation into the boundary, into the sideline. They ran the option back into the boundary, which is tough to do. They don't have much field to operate. Good job by Rutgers stretching it out, and he comes up with a loss. Stretched it out to the point that the minute he pitched the ball to Owens, he was standing on the sideline. Second down and 13, a loss of three. But, you know, you talk about the sack yardage as Bill Shaw goes to the mobile playbook again. And you, and you have to wonder about that sack yardage because this is a veteran offensive yard line, yet they've been sacked. They sacked nine times by Florida State, seven times by Penn State. Shaw rolling right. Looks back to the left across the field. It's going to be close. He's going for Carpenter. They say complete at the 30, the 29-yard line. That was a big play and a fine pass by Bill Shaw. That time he was looking front side at Rob Moore. Moore was covered on the corner by, by Rusty May, so he looks back side. Watch this little reverse action. He comes out. He's looking to his right, but look at the throwback action here as Carpenter comes across the middle, and he puts it right there on the money. Well covered that time by McCoy, the free safety, but a good job by Shaw. Excellent reception by Carpenter. 15 yards on the game. It'll be first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Shaw has engineered a nice drive from deep in his own territory. And off to the fullback, Kennan, and he gets hit as soon as he got the ball from Bill Shaw, and the man that made the stop, Marty Mays, out of Orange, New Jersey. Again, trying to keep him honest inside with the fullback. Wayne Kennan, who moved from a wide receiver position to fullback in early preseason. He's got size. Not the hammer in there. If you look at Dick Anderson, and this is not what he wanted. He had the football, and he gave it up. And sure he's now controlling on the ground for him. Rutgers has not been a good first quarter team anyway, scoring and scoring. And they're looking at uh, Syracuse, excellent field position. Syracuse has been just the opposite. They put points on the board early against people like Pittsburgh, against Penn State last week. They have not been able to hold up. It's a screen pass, swung to the corner to Kinnan, and he goes very little yardage to the 28-yard line, and a nice stop on the corner there by Ron Allen. Ron Allen stepping in on the cornerback position. This time it's a little quick screen here. Watch this little play as he rolls out here. Watch number 43 roll behind. He just drops the ball off to him. Little swing pattern. There he is. He gets on the corner. 76. Bednar, Be 79 Bednar is trying to make the hit on the cornerback, but Allen came up and made the hit. There he is. And Allen is hurt. Allen is down. He made a big play on that. Keep it to a very short game. And here again, Syracuse does not get good yardage on first down. Forced into a third and seven. Shaw has completed two of these as you look at Allen. Allen, a veteran kick returner. Junior, 5'7". You'll see it here on the replay. This is, watch his leg up underneath him as he twists it. That's where he got hit. Ooh, and then he got hit again. He crossed it. But a very nice play for Allen to come up at 5'7", 165, and tackle Kinnan, who goes 6'1", 219. Knees aren't supposed to bend in those two directions as sharply at once. Well, Dumpton's going to be okay. Matter of fact, they're going to send him across the sideline back to his own sideline for more attention. And he'll come out briefly, but leaving under his own power, which is something you always like to see. 
So Ron Allen heads back to the Rutgers sideline, and now here comes third and seven for Syracuse at the Rutgers 27-yard line. No score, 8.41 left to go on the first here at the Scattaway. Shar so far very efficient, four out of four, 35 yards in the air. You know, his completion percentage has been outstanding this year, 57%, but he's thrown seven interceptions, only one touchdown there. Third and seven coming. Shaw back. Five step drop. Looking over the middle. Has a man complete for the first down at the 20 at the 15 yard line. And that is Rob Moore's outstanding wide receiver. They're so conscious of Moore, they gave him a chance to curl back to the football. They let him come back and he knew where the first down sticks are. Watch this play. He drops back. You're going to see Moore on the top of your screen to the left side. 14. Come down and curl in. There's the football and Shaw throws it with a lot of authority. Right in the scene. The linebacker 63 that time. Spidell a little bit too far inside. Syracuse coming up with the clutch third down play to keep this drive alive. First and ten. Moore getting the pads fixed behind Coach Dick McPherson. In the meantime, the offense on the field and moving the ball down from their own 22 to where they sit now, the 15. This is Kinnon. Kinnon with running room all the way to the five. Brought down on the play by Von McCoy in a saving tackle. Also, Elnardo Webster on the play as well. But Dwayne Kinnon has done the brunt of the ball during this drive. And that veteran... Syracuse offensive line getting into people. McCumming, the left guard, and Bernard, the left tackle, along with John Flannery, one of the top centers in the country, blocking, pushing those people out and giving Kinnon a chance to run, and to run a lot early in this football game. Nine-yard chain, second and one at the five. Shaw, both ends are in tight. And off goes to Kinnon, picks his way off left guard, and there's not much there. He may have gotten to the five. He may have gotten the first down. He's going to be very close. Spidell getting up from the pile. Marty Mays also getting up. Chuck Paw as well. Watch this offensive line. White jerseys coming off nice and low. There's Flannery, 53. He gets into Mays, the middle, the nose guard, and gives Kinnon, even though the blocking was, was uh, tough in there, gives Kinnon a chance to slice off and get a shot at this first down. They're going to measure it, but it looks like he's got it. This is exactly what Dick McPherson wanted to happen. Take that football and march up the field. Do it authoritatively on the ground and picks it up with the pass. Bolster the confidence of that young man, Bill Shaw. In fact, he looks very sharp in his early drive. Coming up with clutch plays, scrambling a little bit, and making the, the key pass when he's at He's five for five in this drive, including that key third and seven catch by Rob Moore. And that set them up inside the five with a pin and carry. It's first and goal from the four-yard line. Syracuse knocking on the door, no score. And off Kinnon, Kinnon to the two, driven back by Spidell. Also Yudovich on the play, and also on the corner, it's going to be Rusty May. As you watch this, the, the linebackers with the Rutgers, Yudovich and Spidell, we call their names a lot. Watch number 63, Spidell come across as Kinnon hits up inside. There's 63 making the hit, not permitting him to get much. Spidell. Really a, a workhorse in their experience coming off of a, a year where he sat out of football and getting back into it. Second and goal. Whoops, movement on the right side of the Syracuse line brings the flag out. Flannery snapped it and it looked like Turnell Sims was the man who got off the mark early. Those are the kind of mistakes you can't make down in close. No reason for it. And it's the right tackle Sims who moved before the snap to push Syracuse back and change it now. 62 is the right tackle at the top of the left screen here and there he comes off well into it and he creates the fumble he creates the penalty and now Syracuse is looking down the third down excuse me the second down with the ball sitting outside on the seven yard line this play started 15 plays ago Syracuse has worked the clock to the measure of six minutes they've piled up six first downs on the drive Shar has been outstanding and they need a pass from him right now Two wide receivers, three wide receivers in the formation out for Syracuse. Second and goal from the seven. Shaw changing up on the line. Loses the handle of the football, went ahead with it, and it's a recovery to Rutgers. Picking it up, Scott Miller in the middle of it all. Unbelievable call. He was looking at the automatic to go to Moore in the end zone on the fade pattern, and he never got the pass off. What a break for Rutgers. 
Watch this. He's going to go right. He's going to throw to our right as we look at this screen. That's where 14 Moore's lined up. He never gets it forward. He just drops the ball. It comes right out of his hand. And keep in mind at the same time as you look at Scott Miller that the play clock was winding down and had one second left. He felt he had to hurry as Scott Miller makes the fumble recovery. We've got a timeout. No score. 542 left in the first. Down in the end zone, Syracuse had punched the ball all the way to the two-yard line. And here's what happens. The play clock ran out. Char sees it. Quickly does not even, he was not even hit when he let go of that football. He, he was automatic. He, he wanted to throw the ball in the corner to Moore, and he got a little too excited. And he never got the ball off. It's a big break, but that's what's played Syracuse all year. The quarterback, the question of that position, the mistakes that are being made. So Rutgers starts their own 13. First and 10, and Ernie's going to throw. A little flare pass goes to Henry Henderson, complete at the 26-yard line, brought down at about the 27, helping out on the play for Syracuse. Looks like Sean Whiteman. Good job here by, watch this, he drops back, first down, deep in his territory, a little fake to his tailback, 27, and slips him in the middle. Meanwhile, the tight ends come across, taking the linebackers out of the play, and dumps the ball off to Henderson. Good execution, first down, Rutgers. First and 10, ball moved out to the 26 after a 13-yard gain. Deep handoff, this is Henderson again. Penetration by Burnett, foiled the play as he got back to the line of scrimmage and then barely. Favaro finishes him off, but the penetration by Burnett at the line, number 70, really foiled the play. Henry Henderson's a senior, number 27. He's at 5'7", 165 pounds. He's been a back here, and he's run the ball and done a good job for Rutgers, but this year he's been hampered by an ankle injury. And only this week he's practiced enough for them to feel they wanted to get him into the flow of their offense. Years ago, he was their starter in the offensive backfield. Melton comes across the formation on second down. Pitch to Henderson. Henderson out over the 30-yard line to about the 32. You see him on the stop, among others. Bavaro, who always seems to find his way around the football for Syracuse. Bavaro, the leading tackler, number 59. 17 tackles alone against Penn State. Really a, 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 a tough player, tough in the middle. Both Busey and Bavaro and Rutgers today does not want to contend with running at them. They feel that that's not the way to go. They want to spread the offense a little bit and try and eventually tie those guys up to being in the pass coverage. Because Rutgers like to throw to their back out of the backfield, the linebacker's going to have to cover. Gain of four, makes it third and four. No score, Rutgers with a key third down conversion. Ernie with time, throws it out to Cam. First down and more. Field still on his feet and then brought down finally by Terry Wooden at the 45-yard line, a 22-yard game. Exactly the call. That's it. Getting the back out of the backfield. James Hand came into this with 19 receptions over 13.5 yards for catch. Watch this. Drop back action. His 32. He slips out, comes across the middle. The linebackers lose him. He's wide open. If they don't cover him, who's going to pick up on him? Eventually, the cornerback, good, good move there on uh, the cornerback number 37. Eventually, Thompson, the safety, comes over to make the hit. First and 10. Rutgers moving the football at the Syracuse 45. And off Henderson, straight ahead, not much there. DeRidge got him by the ankle as he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Fred DeRidge, part of that very, very good defensive line for Syracuse. The Ritchie has really made himself into a, an outstanding nose tackle. At 6'2", 268, comes out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He's leading those down linemen, Burnett, the Ritchie, and Rooks. He's the leading tackler of those three. And he moves right around the block at the end of that time. And caught Henderson right at the line of screen. 25 tackles coming into this game, 12 of them all by himself. Second and 10. Kearney. Fires a pass. It is complete to McQueen. A flag on the play at the 30-yard line. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the 27. Conditionally, a gain of 18, but let's see what the flag is. It could be. It, it, the way the flag was thrown was a little bit behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be interesting to see. what It's got to go against Rutgers. Maybe a uh, legal receiver downfield. Offensive and offensive interference. And loss of down coming up here for Rutgers, as you see Dick Anderson talking on the near sideline. Uh, this is his it's a big gain, a big plan of part of Scott Ernie. On the offense, walk them down, 15 oh. yards, wow. it's third down. Tough, tough penalty to take. Why is that an 18-yard gain? Rutgers has been plagued with, with uh, interference and turnovers and fumbles and, and penalties this year. 
Rick Anderson still makes his case. Let's see it again. Okay, here we come. It's a sprint out, a pure sprint on the right side. Ernie comes down. He's looking upfield. His receiver comes back to the football. That's McQueen to catch the ball. Now, the flag was not thrown there. It was thrown upfield more on, on the, the tight end who was in, into the pattern also. Scott Blanche cut in underneath Tyrone McQueen that time, and that may be where the penalty occurred. Third and 25 for Rutgers. Back at their own 40. Ernie steps ahead, and he'll get sacked. He's brought down by Terry Wooden. Also, Rooks on the play, George Rooks. Coming into this ball game, the one thing that they were concerned about offensively all year, there's Terry Wooden, the great All-American candidate from Syracuse, and he's probably one of the best, if not the best, they've ever had at that position. Rutgers offensively lack of converting third downs, but with third downs and 20-plus, it's very hard to do against a team like Syracuse. They gotta, they're going to punt the football here. Darrell Pellegrino is going to come in and punt it away, standing at his own 23-yard line. There's the kick. Line drive. Walker's going to get to it. Field it on the bounce. It's a 35. Struggles ahead. Not much yardage there. About a two-yard return. So Syracuse comes back out on the field after a 37-yard punt and a two-yard return. No score with a minute and 48 left. We now pause for a word from your local state. I'll bring you calamine lotion when you sit in those seats. I wonder how much that costs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They jumped the fence here. That's part of the contour of this stadium. They have four of those specific grassy, bushy areas here at Rutgers Stadium. As you see, the crowd still coming in. First and ten, Syracuse at their own 37. Bill Shaw. Play fake. Pitches to the corner to Owens. Owens with a first down and more on a saving tackle by Tim Lester prevents him from going even further into Rutgers territory at the 46. That time they got on the corner with the option. That's what they've been successful at this year. Watch this. The Shark comes down the line of scrimmage, going to his left, going to our left as we look at it. A little fake to the fullback, hold the linebacker, and right here he kicks it out to Owens. Good block on the corner downfield by number 14, Rob Moore, which makes it possible for him to make a big gain out of it. Moore. Great, great football player for Syracuse. Good job, Rob. 17-yard gain on the play. Shaw, again, on the option. Pitches as he went down. Owens again out of bounds. And he's going to get about three yards on it. Looks like he's hurt as he went down on the cross. That's a that, hard play to make when you consider that was the backside number 93. Elnardo Webster trailing the play. Makes the hit on the quarterback. Shar did very well to get this pitch off. Watch 93 come down. Makes a great get. Comes off a block to make the hit. Yet Shar gets it out to, to Owens and they make a gain on it. Gain of about two. It's a modest one, but it's second down and eight. Out of the eye with Kinnon and Owens and back again. Deep handoff, Owens. Owens gets isolated down to about the 41-yard line. Topitsis makes the stop for Lecter. Topitsis is the nose guard coming off the block of the center planter. He makes the hit. Owens picks up about four yards on the play. That time they got him deep in the back. He'll get the ball on him and try and run him off tackle. Let him cut back. Michael Owens. Senior tail back out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. He's explosive and he can make things happen, make people miss. And he's been the workhorse offensively in the running game for Syracuse this fall. Third down and about five coming up for Syracuse at the Rutgers 41. 41 seconds remaining in the first period. Syracuse will win at their back. Char, long count, back to throw. Watch Carpenter deep has him. And it's a touchdown. He fell in over Rob Allen. Rob Carpenter, 41 yards deep, scores, and Syracuse is on the board. Nothing fancy about this play. Drop back action. He just runs Carpenter on a fly pattern up the side, and he just outruns and gets behind Allen. And Allen, at 5'7", could not handle Carpenter at 6'2", and the speed of Carpenter. Watch the play. Drop back action. Carpenter's going to come from the left side of the screen. Here's Allen. He found the football, The Carpenter had two or three steps on him, and he launches that body, a 6-2 frame, and gets across the end zone. Beautiful execution, great pass by the quarterback, Sean. John Biscuff to kick. And they're encouraging Sean on that sideline. He needed that. Everybody's supporting him. He has to come through for him today, and he's done well in his first half. Backup quarterback Mark McDonald to hold. He's so looking to spot the ball here. Going to point after John Flannery, the center, then set to snap it. 
for Syracuse. But an excellent play by Shaw, which is only his second touchdown pass of the year. It stops the clock with 27 seconds left in the first. And as in the pattern in other Syracuse games this season, the Orangemen score first. And they look good in doing it. High snap, Biscuit with a kick. And he missed it. It hit the upright and spanked back out. His third miss thus far this season. And that's after a year, actually several years, of not missing any for 286 straight chances. Here's the kick again as Syracuse has six on the board, but their attempt at seven bounces off the pole. Let's take a look at a catch again by Rob Carpenter. The big play, the big play has really plagued Rutgers this year. They give up those big plays, and they give them up early, and they're behind early in this game. Four plays, 64 yards, 41-yard catch by Carpenter. Excellent pass by Billy Shaw. Transfer from Notre Dame. Let's take a look at that extra point try again. And, uh, John Biscop kicking off natural grass for the first time this season. He just shanks this ball. Watch it. He just shanks it and pulls it to the left. It hits the upright and bounces back on the tough break. Of course, no T, as you understand. Here comes Biscop again to kick. Melton swooping under it at the seven. Melton solid wall up the middle of the field and he gets gang tackled at the 27 yard line and to make the first initial hit to Garland Hawkins out of Hyattsville, Maryland. Rutgers gets the football again trailing here six to nothing with 21 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Rutgers and the fans here at homecoming and that's a mini wave designed to go over one area of the stands only and nobody gets wet. First and ten, Rutgers coming out of the football. Steve Martin here with Bob Cassiola. We're in Piscataway, New Jersey. Final plays of the first quarter of action. Syracuse up 6-0. Scott Ernie out of the grasp of Busey. Complete to Melton. Melton going across the field, now cutting up at the 42-yard line. And he's brought down there after a 15-yard game. Big play that time. Scott Ernie really had to scramble and get away from trouble. He threw the ball on the run. Melton, 15, the junior out of Mays Landing. New Jersey comes on and makes the play. Watch it from the end zone here. He's scrambling. He's stripping as he sprints to the right side. There's the pressure from Busey, the linebacker, who was blitzing. And they caught Melton. Big play to get a first down. First and 10. Again, no huddle here for Rutgers. And off can. James Can across the 45, driven back by Fred DeRiggi, right in the middle of that Syracuse defensive formation. DeRiggi is a tough guy to handle in the middle. He came off the block as we look at the time running out here in the first period. Jimmy Can took a real shot from DeRiggi, and he's feeling it. And he's going to get up very slowly, if at all, here. He's on his hands and knees at the 45-yard line. The first quarter has expired, and the Syracuse Orange men sit here with a 6-0 lead over Rutgers as James Can getting some medical attention before heading to the sidelines. One quarter down, three to go. Syracuse 6-0. We now pause for a word from your local station. You're looking at the overflow crowd. That is the crowd that sits right in front of the Hale Athletic Center that is adjoining the Rutgers Stadium complex here. Biggest crowd here was about 31,000 last year for homecoming against Temple. This stadium holds about 30,000, so they've got an overflow, and they're looking for 32 today. Rutgers, second down and seven. And they're on 46, trailing Syracuse, six nothing. Ernie falls and throws as he did it. He slipped and fell. His knee hit the ground right there, and that's where we're going to mark the ball. A tough break for Rutgers coming off of... Uh, uh, a second and seven. This ball is going to be pushed back as you see him. He's sprinting on the corner here. He's trying to hit number 27, Henderson, who came out of the backfield in motion with the wet field there. He sort of trips. It might have been that. Just might have been that he got his feet tied up behind him. As you look at the uh, sideline and they're signaling in the plays to Scott Ernie. The rain just stopped here at around supper time last night. And uh, with the cold weather overnight, the field is still considerably wet if it isn't loose. Ernie became a victim of that. Third down and 16. 
Ernie a throw. Looking long for McQueen. Against double coverage, it's incomplete at the 20-yard line. Boy, did Scott Ernie air it out with the wind of And he paid the price because Terry Wooden was coming from the outside linebacker position. He got a hit on him, and he knew he was there. Rutgers does not feel they can handle Wooden. As you look at the first quarter stat, Syracuse controlling the football on the ground and really in the air a little bit. And they're well ahead, almost double of what Rutgers had, but time also. Took a look at that balance. They're still passing more than they're running, but their running game, they've got to consider it as kind of a success. Offside, Syracuse. Big break for Rutgers that time. They were looking at third, fourth down, punting the football, and now they've got a chance with third and 11. And the way that Scott Ernie can chew up yardage with big plays, you know why Dick McPherson's concerned on the far side. But again, Rutgers in these third and long. They don't want to be here. This has plagued them all year. This is what they've got to get away from. Trailing 6-0. Syracuse got that. Ernie, seven-step drop, goes to the screen. Oh, nearly intercepted by George Brooks. Brooks says, this one's for me. He was looking to hit number 26 for Rutgers. That was Roberts coming out of the backfield. He's trying to tie him up in the middle, but Roberts couldn't get open, and Rooks, the big sophomore out of White Plains at 6'3", 272, White Plains, New York, steps up and almost has the play of a lifetime. Good job again by the Syracuse defense on third down, and Rutgers again punting the football. Walker is back deep as Ernie goes to the headset again. Pellegrini with a kick, and a 37-yarder off this time. A wind-aided kick this time to the 14. Here's Walker. Just dancing outside. Allen and Lester are the men to stop him there at the 31-yard line. A 37-yard kickoff. A punt, rather, and a 16-yard return. The great Walker. No consistency in that offense. They had their first drive go downfield, and then they threw the interception. Scott Ernie looking at it. He's completed 4 of 6, but he has that one interception, and he's been under pressure of late. Syracuse starting to come after him. They've got to get some rhythm into their offense. Very hard to do when you don't have that much of a running game. In the meantime, Bill Shaw has been perfect. Six out of six, 88 yards and a touchdown, and only one real mistake. Down at the Rutgers two-yard line. We're actually at the seven. Back to throw. Into the win. Looking over the middle for his tight end. Dees, it's incomplete. Udovich covering on the play. Good job by Udovich. He looked up the tight end as he came across. Got a little piece of him. Knocked him off stride. But Char that time was looking exclusively. Watch on the right side for his tight end. Dees, number 86. See Dees get hit by number 91 there. Just knocks him off a little bit. Couldn't make the play. Good job by the linebacker. Once again, Syracuse does not convert on first down. and come up second and long. But Char has uh, been no stranger to that. And he has been equal to the task thus far this afternoon. Second and ten, and off to Owen. Owen slices wide off to the right side. Makes his way out over the 35, actually over the 33-yard line. It's going to be a gain of three on the play. Brings up third and seven. Interesting how they mix these plays up. So Syracuse throwing the football a lot in the first uh, period. Coming in, coming back right away with it, looking for the tight end. This time, done a little counteraction to the tailback. Mixing their plays nice, keeping that Rutgers defense sort of uh, in that uh, gray area, not knowing exactly what's going to happen. Now they look at a third down and five. Syracuse leading 6-0. Char with one touchdown pass to his credit already this afternoon. Back to throw once more. Looking for his back. Oh, he can get it. Get in. Bosses midfield. Get it still on his feet. And it's brought down finally at the Rutgers 35-yard line. Gain of 23 on the play by the fullback, Dwayne Kimmett. Great call, screen, back into the sideline. That's where you like to do it. Well executed. Rutgers never even felt it coming. They put pressure on the quarterback. Watch this. He drops back. Here's the pressure. Linebacker, 63, Spidell drops deep. There it is. Back into the sideline, and he comes up. Now, remember, he's a former wide receiver. You get him in the open field, and he knows what to do with the football. 28 of Char's 62 completions have gone to backs coming into this game, and that is about the third pass that Dwayne Kinnon has caught today. Big third down conversion for Syracuse. They're looking at first and 10 in Rutgers territory to 35. Shaw, quick drop, wants Carpenter, complete for eight yards to the 28-yard line of Rutgers. In on the stop, Darren Sellers. Alicia DeCarpenter, the transfer out of Notre Dame, and already has the score thus far this afternoon. He's caught 19 passes coming in at a 12-6 average. 
They like to do that. They like to hit those outside patterns, spread the field on you a little bit, and they do that very well. By doing that, they force you to cover with more people. And when you cover with more people, that means that the running game has a better chance because you're maybe going against five instead of six or seven. They like that quick drop, get the ball in the flat. Replay for Bill Shaw, third and short. Second and short, rather. And off goes to Kinnon. Played it safe, and he gets the first down to the 23-yard line. Actually, the 22 before he's driven back. Tim Lester makes a hit. Ruck, uh, Rutgers defense now paying the price. They've been on the field a lot early in this ball game, and that big offensive experience line of Syracuse is digging in and blowing them off the football, and Dick Anderson knows it. They're averaging 35 minutes of play on the field these last couple of Saturdays. And thus far in the first quarter, they were on the field for nine out of the 15. Minutes. But Rutgers lacks defensively. They don't have the kind of player who can make the big play for them. The guy who breaks down the line of scrimmage and puts pressure on the quarterback. They've got to have that against a team like Syracuse because they really are bigger than them and really probably strong. First down, 10. At the Rutgers 22. And it has it again over the 20 and falls ahead to the 18-yard line. First man to make the stop, Marty Mays, the nose guy. A lot of work today for Dwayne Kinnon. If you looked at this offense early in this ball game, you'd have to say that they're really utilizing their fullback more so than they have all year. And there's uh, competition all over the field here today. 11.50 left to go in the first half of play. Syracuse up 6 nothing. They're looking at second down and six from the Rutgers 18. Shaw finds Owen. Owens at the 15. Still on its feet. He surged ahead, and that surge may have gotten in the first down. Tackle on the play made by Mays from the nose guard spot. And that's where it's being, the job is being done up front now. The offensive line of Syracuse controlling the football for him, doing the job up front, and wearing down Rutgers. This is exactly as uh, Dick McPherson imagined it. His team loosening Rutgers up with a pass, with quick passes outside for people like Carpenter, for people like Kinnon, and that's how much Syracuse needs for another first down. It's a, an, another excellent situation for them, third and inches. Absolutely, in their, run, in their running situation, in their four-down zone here, they're in great shape, and there it is, the play selection for Syracuse today already. Pass nine to 126, but running the football 17 times early on here, and mainly with the fullback, Dwayne Kennedy. Look at Bill Shaw. Stood in there. He's yet to miss a ball so far this afternoon. Well, actually, he did miss one in this last series going to his tight end D's, but other than that, it's been seven out of eight so far in the ball game for him. He's looking at 30 inches. Full house backfield. David Walker joins Owens and Kinnon. Shaw calls his own number and fumbled the ahead, fumbled the ball, but he may have gotten back on it. He did, and he recovered it and fell forward for the first down. Some days you got to live right. Bill Shark's having his share of it today. Ooh, look at that Dixon. Wow. <laughs> that was close. But Shaw gets it, moves the chains to the 11-yard line, so... Syracuse looks like they can still get a first down inside the one. Substitution, Joe Savoy, number 78, comes in at left tackle for Rutgers. He's a veteran who they like to play on the early downs, mainly against the run. They're anticipating run here from Syracuse. First and 10 at the 10 and a half. High formation, both ends in tight. Moore, the lone wideout. And off on the counter to Owens inside the 10, going to the 6. Yudovich is there, along with Savoy. Comes out of the ball game, gripping his shoulder. The block made by Bednar, the right, right guard who pulled the trap on this. You'll see 79 come across along with 62. That's Sims. They run that play, and basically, this is that famous tray counter that the Washington Redskins made famous, where they step the back in one direction, pull two linemen through, and they go back against the grain. That's exactly what Owen ran, the tray counter. Gain of five, second and five. Ball at the six. Here we go. Here we go. The quick. Quick. Out. It is two more. Complete for a touchdown. Syracuse goes two TDs up. And that's what they've done so effectively in the past. Coming off the option action, counter step, comes down the line of scrimmage, takes a few steps back. This time he had more flank number 14. 
in the wide position and he just ran a little turn. Actually, he ran a uh, slant pattern to the inside more at 6201. Good position on the cornerback. Made the catch. And, Rut and Rutgers uh, falling behind here 12-0. Now facing the possibility of Syracuse going for two. And they will. The Biscop's going to stay on the sideline. Missed an extra point earlier, so Dick McPherson wants his offense back on schedule. So they'll try for the two to make up for that and then collect another. Carpenter in motion across the formation. Back to throw. It is into the end zone. Complete. They've got the two-pointer to Rob Moore despite some heavy flack out there by Rusty May. That's what he does all the time. That's what he does all the time. They just throw it up for him, and he's got great leaping ability, and Moore just goes up and catches. This is the touchdown again. Watch this. He starts out on the option. He steps down the line. He's going to pull back. Here comes Moore on the slant inside. He's got position on the cornerback, Rusty Mays, and that's it. Great execution. Syracuse starting to put it together offensively. 10-10 left to go in the second quarter. Syracuse 14-0 on Rutgers. Let's look at the touchdown again. Rob Moore going against Rusty Mays in the back. There he is. He just comes down, breaks it to the inside. He's got position on him. He's also got size. Mays is in there. Uh, much smaller man at 5'10". The Moore is 6'2". And then the conversion, the two-point conversion is on the top of the screen working again against him. He just throws it up and he just out jumps. Great position. He saw the ball all the way. Man for man coverage. It was two tough plays for Rusty Mays, but he's working against a great athlete there, Rob Moore. 6-2 against 5-11. There's the scoring drive. The touchdown catch by Moore is his fourth touchdown of the season. Rob Moore, an outstanding athlete and receiver, and many close observers of the Syracuse scene say he's one of the best receivers to come out of there in a long time. He includes people like Tommy Kane and Art Monk, Gershwey. There's the kick by Biscuit. Allen trying to snare it down at the six. Allen up the right sideline, and he gets out over the 28-yard line. Brian LeBaron is there to stop it. And it's going to be back at the 19, rather. So it's a 13-yard reception or return by Ron Allen. As you look at time of possession, this has haunted Rutgers all season, particularly early in the ball game, where they don't score that much. The opposition gets to them. Look at that. What a difference so far. So Scott Ernie he gets to bring the offense out with the wind at his back here in the second period, trailing 14 to nothing. Got McQueen split wide to the bottom. Jackson is the slot back. Screen pass coming out, complete to Mike Body. Body cuts to the sideline at the 26-yard line, and he's going to be marked out of bounds at about 27, a late flag after. We got a late hit out of bounds on body, and the official was right there to get it. Big break for Rutgers. That was a screen. They started him off early, drop back action, dumped the ball off, figuring they're going to get a rush out of, uh, out of uh, Syracuse. They did it as we watched Joe Shirk, the referee, tell it. Rutgers gets some extra yardage added onto this play. Here's the play. Drop back action. Body sets up number 31, just drops off to the left side. Good execution. There's number 70, Burnett, coming in on him. Dumps the ball off. A good effort there. Number 55 coming all the way over from the, the backside to force him out of bounds. Dead ball foul. Personal foul on the kicking team. Late hit out of bounds. That is the first down. Talking to Tim Sandquist over there on the Syracuse sideline. So you tack on a 15-yard penalty after a 7-yard gain, and it brings the football out to the 42-yard line of Rutgers. First and 10. Straight drop for Ernie. Pass is complete to Jackson. He's brought down in Syracuse territory at the 46-yard line. Good job by Ernie. He had hung in the pocket. He was feeling a little bit of pressure, but Jackson, 83, ran a perfect pattern. He comes back to the football to take the angle away. Watch this. Here's the drop back action. Good rush, good protection. He waits for Jackson on the right side here, and Jackson, 83, comes back away from 26 Barry, the cornerback to make the catch. Is that a big play man or what? Randy Jackson in his 13th reception. He's had three of those 13 have gone for touchdowns of 90, 81, and 69 yards. That one was just about 13. First and 10. Complete, no, incomplete with James Pan. Tried to run before he received it. And it's going to stop the clock, and Mike Body gets up gingerly, if you notice. Body's dealing with a nerve problem in his leg, and it looks like he's re-injured. Gingerly going back to the Rutgers huddle as you look at Dick Anderson. The 
Anderson knows that he's got to get some points in this first half. He's got to stay reasonably close as we watch Body come off the field, and he has had exactly that, a nerve problem. It comes up and bothers him, and he's, uh, he's, in, he's in pain right now. Why Giles is in there for him at fullback. Four wide out. Here's Ernie across the middle, completes to Can at the 40. Can has the first down. Trying to drag it down there is Walker as he gets himself down to the 32-yard line. Another 13-yard game for us. You see the linebacker coming over from the far side. Again, they're hitting the back against the linebacker. That time Can came across the formation, made the hit. Watch this, 32. He'll show up in the screen. He's going to come across the formation. There he is, making the catch right there. He gets to the outside. He's got to protect that football against these guys. Number 17, Walker, the cornerback, and then Busey and Bavaro making the hit. Let's take a look at possible trouble here for Rutgers. Mike Body there. Very steady fullback on the sideline. Play comes back. Ernie scrambling to the left. Completes to McQueen, but no, they say trapped. Incomplete at the 22-yard line. Walker covering on the play. Now what they're doing is moving him out of the pocket, sprinting him and rolling him on the corner to get away from the rush and then let receivers who are spread all over the field find a seam. And that's what Scott Ernie's done all year. He's done it very effectively. There's Mike Body now. That's going to be a lineman. That's not my body. He's big as the body when you're looking at it. That's 57, Nick Erda, the outstanding senior guard for Rutgers, also their backup center. Second down and 10. Pressure, Ernie. pressure, pressure. Big pressure. Burnett chasing. Hawkins chasing as well, and he throws it away at the Syracuse 15-yard line intended for McQueen. This is trouble, though, for Rutgers again. They've got a good drive going. They're putting things together. The pressure comes on Scott Ernie, and now they're looking at third and long. Here it is. Watch the pressure by Burnett, number 70. He's working all the time. He's coming up. He took the inside route. He's got the speed. This big 6'3", 265-pound senior. Great effort there. And here comes 95 from the backside. Garland Hawkins. Garland Hawkins making extra pressure. They really put, put, put the quarterback Ernie in a tough situation. Burnett get help when Rutgers fullback ran into their own offensive line. And his Ernie jump pass over the middle. It is incomplete intended for Giles or Omar Kohler. Never saw him. Pressure from the outside. Very disappointing series right there for Rutgers and Scott Ernie. They had it going and they lost it right there. Now they need a punt from Pellegrini to going to kick them beat, but looks like they're going to bring Kiesler on for a field goal attempt of 50 yards. Well, he's got the win. He's got the win behind him. He's just got to keep it accurate. He's on the right hash. Coming out to hold for Rutgers, that's James Garantino. Garantano, rather. It's a 50-yard attempt with a win from the right hash mark. There's the kick. It's low. Is it going to be enough? Yes, he got it. For Doug Eastwood. What a gamble by Dick Anderson. A gamble. He had the win. If that, if he doesn't make that one, he gives Syracuse the ball back in great field position, up 14 to nothing. But he made it. 14-3 Syracuse. We now pause for a word from your local station. Big decision for Dick Anderson. He made a big decision here. He's got to make something happen for his team. They've been very flat in the first half. They lost opportunities. He took a great chance there in trying to make that, but he knew he had to do something. He made it. If he didn't, Syracuse has a great shot in field position. He got his team back into the ballgame a little bit, gave him a little something to hang over as they go in here. The, uh, with 8 minutes and 35 seconds left in the second period, the defense now has to come up with the play. That's his career long for that man, Doug Eastlew, who won their ball game against Boston College about four weeks ago, 9-7, with that late field goal in the Meadowlands. And now puts his team on the board here, trailing by 11, second quarter. His kick fielded by Ismail at the 10. Audrey Ismail brings the ball out to the... 28-yard line, and he's brought down there by number 42, Eric Reed. Ishmael, of course, the twin brother of uh, the Rocket. Both of them hailing from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Exceptional speed. That's his 17th kickoff return this year. We're starting to mention Rocket Ishmael for the Heisman because of his electrifying kickoff returns for Notre Dame this season. As you see, Bill Shar, what a first half he's had. Two TDs. 133 yards and 9 out of 10. 
next week we've got another great american independent battle between west virginia and boston college at boston college and we'll see another great quarterback here major harris from boston college with a new quarterback by the name of willie hicks willie hicks makes things happen he's got speed he's got quickness and uh, they moved him in and he's starting to deliver for him that should be a good one we should be seen on most of these stations at high noon next week so bill shars Back with his offense on the field. He's got field position in his own 27. As you look from the end zone, now overhead. Syracuse leading 14 to 3. Play fake. Shaw to throw. Looking over the middle. It's complete to his halfback. Owens. Owens. Still moving in midfield. Brought down there. Finally in midfield after a gain of 23 yards. They say that Mike Owens has the ability to make people miss, and that's exactly what he did. Up in the middle, watch this as you watch it from behind the offense. Watch 44 come from the tailback position. A little play fake to him, then he slips into the middle. There's the ball. He dishes it off to him, wide open, and right there. There he makes the linebacker, Bouchard, missed the tackle, and he's off to the race. Great play by Owens. Ron Allen has to pull him down. That really gets uh, Syracuse an opportunity to utilize all of Owens' talent. First and ten. Charge. Screen pass. Kinnon this time. Kinnon over the 45 down to about the 43-yard line. Darren Sellers makes the stop for Rutgers. That's the ability when you got two backs who have the speed to get outside and also give you the threat of catching the football. Kinnon has that, and as does Michael Owens. Came right back after a first down, running a screen. They're keeping the Rutgers defense off bounds. Lots of good play calling here uh, by the Syracuse offense. Uh, doing, the, doing the number. The plays are being sent down to him by George DeLeon. Second down and four. Syracuse at the Rutgers 43. Shaw, quick look in. It is complete to Carpenter. Catches it and goes to a knee at the 36-yard line. Gain on the play of seven. Again, spreading the field, hitting those passes wide, taking those linebackers and covering them, and sooner or later they're going to pop somebody inside. First down for the Orange men. A couple of long, sustaining drives here. Ball possession has been important, and Shars pulled the trigger when he's had to. They're working against the, an offense, their offensive line dominating the line of scrimmage, and they're really going to work on a small secondary that Rutgers has. They have guys back there that just don't match up in size to the Syracuse receivers. And off fullback, Kinnon, opening, big opening, right down the middle of the field, and he's brought down at the 10-yard line. A gain of 27 on the play. Spread the field, spread the field, get your conscious out there, and then slip it inside that time. Again, watch the blocking up front. He's running behind experience. Flannery, the center, and a trap blocked there by Bednar. See him come across and trap the defensive tackle, Savoy, and here he is, right up the middle. Split the linebackers, and Syracuse offensively is dominating this game. There's the junior out of Brooklyn, New York, Dwayne Kinnon. Coming into this ball game, he picked up about 110 yards rushing. Picked up 27 on that play. First and goal from just outside the 10. Here's Kinnon again over the 5. Yudovich snares him down at the 4-yard line. We talked about the change today, the emphasis, and there's the rushing last year when they had Drummond to alternate with Owens and Johnson, the great fullback they had. Today, look at Kinnon. He's coming on. There was a big difference. That's what he had coming into this ball game. Today, the difference is very marked as Owens is getting his yardage, and now Kinnon is getting his. Ten rushes, 65 yards for Dwayne Kinnon this afternoon. Second down and about four. You can get a first down inside the one. Here's Owens. Got hit by Lester. Still goes ahead. He's driven back at the one-yard line. And he's going to be shy of the first down and the touchdown. Maybe close enough to measure, though, Bob. Just overwhelming the offensive line. Just surging, coming off the ball, and just dominating. And watch, just watch the white jerseys get off the ball. Look at them get down low. Take people off the blocks. Look at that block up inside. Bernard, the left tackle, and just pushing people back. And it's an overmatch right now. There's really, Rutgers has to get a break in order to stay in his ballgame defensively because they're being dominated on the offensive line. That man right there, Bednarz, was one of them, along with Turnell Sims, who led the charge on the right side of the line, and they are that close to a first down. Syracuse can get a first down inside the one. 
And they're looking at third and inches. Third and inches for the first down, third and less than a yard for the touchdown. Syracuse leading 14 to 3, 545 left in a fast moving first half here at the Scataway, New Jersey. It'll be a full house backfield when they come to the line. As David Walker will join Michael Owens and Dwayne Kinnon behind Bill Shaw. Now Walker lines up on a wing to the right. And off Owens. Touchdown, Syracuse. Michael Owens makes it 20 to 3 from a yard out. He said coming into this ball game, it was a critical game for both teams. They had to really start putting something together. Syracuse in this first half is putting together their offense. And you have to go back to the opening game of the season against Temple where they did it. And Dick Anderson knows it. His defense has been on the field a lot. They've been dominated. It's going to be a tough chore for the Rutgers to stay in this football game with Syracuse. They've got to come back and they're going to have to do it on offense. Biscuit out of the hold of Mark McDonald for the extra point. He's missed one today. Syracuse... Got that back with a two-point conversion last time out. There's the snap. Here's the kick. It's up. And it is good. So Syracuse takes a 21-3 lead on Michael Owens' touchdown run of one yard. 5.32 left to go. In the first half of play, here we'll see it again. Just an off-tackle play with tailback carrying. Kinnon leading him up off tackle in the surge. He gets hit, but he's crossed the plane and he's in for the score. Touchdown, Syracuse. They're up 21-3. Now Rutgers' inability to get into the end zone has left that man without a job. This well, he's, he doesn't like to expire, that's for sure. <laughs> but Syracuse, certainly, if he were working in the other direction, they would have kept him busy today. As Dick Anderson looks on as you see the Syracuse scoring drive. Seven plays, 73 yards. Michael Owens going in from a yard out at the 532 mark to make it 21 to 3. Syracuse leading Rutgers. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. He's got to be thinking, Bob, about really that first pass interception. It has slowed everything down here for Rutgers. They took the, the kickoff, moved down the field to an interception. Syracuse got the ball back, made a drive, got a score, and it built their confidence. He's melted. Moving outside in the 30. Nice return and gets it out of bounds at the 36 yard line. It's going to be a return on the play of 14 yards. It gives Rutgers a little bit of field position to work with as they try to offset this 18-point deficit. Gary Melt, number 15, really made this team in the spring. He was a very pleasant surprise. Watch him here as he returns the ball. And watch Biscuit, number one. He hangs in there pretty tough. Melton breaks it to the outside. There's a one-on-one -on -one situation. And he puts the shoulder in and drives him out of bounds. The kicker knows when he's faced with the ball carrier there. Chances are there's not too many people behind him. Ernie back to throw on first. Steps up. Now has to run with it. Gets ahead over the 40-yard line to about the 43. A gain of six. And Dan Busey is there to beat it. And that's what Syracuse is doing. They put four or five people on the line. They're just coming after Ernie and saying, all right, put it up if you have to. We've got him in a great situation. Ahead 21-3. Offensive line has got to block them, but they've got to take a little pressure off them. They've got to be able to counter this stuff and look maybe to draw the ball once in a while instead of just throwing every down, and there it is. Look at Syracuse on the mark for a 500-yard day. That's uh, three trips to one up and down the field almost. Second and four. Ernie to throw. The screen pass comes out to Mike Foddy. Body at the 45, and Syracuse is ahead. Got the first down and the ball popped loose, but they're gonna they're gonna blow it dead at the 49-yard line. Mike right body playing with an injured leg. You gotta give him credit because he's hurt, and you can tell when he made that move. There's Wooden all over the field. Here it is. Drop back action with the screen right over the middle. Dump the ball right in the middle of the body. 31 to fullback. Who takes it? It's up behind his blockers. Makes a pretty good move here on on Rivera uh, just to get up field and get the first down. It's first down. Just at midfield, Ernie steps up again, gets away from Derridge, he goes to body incomplete. He was looking deep, he was looking for Kane out in the flat, but he was covered that time by David Bavaro very well, and consequently, he had to look for an out, but the outlet wasn't there, and again, it's second and ten. 
And at halftime, we've got lots of things for you. We'll take a look at our Rolling Rock Review, which takes a look at Great American Independent Football from a week ago. Our Great American Champion feature, 100 years of Syracuse football. An interesting tribute today. We'll have scores from around the country, plus our Student Athlete of the Week honoring the Rutgers offensive lineman. Going straight ahead now on the draw play. Second down, and it doesn't work for much at all. Rooks is in on the stop as Mike Body goes nowhere. Body. They thought they'd they come into this ball game and spread the field a little bit and draw on Syracuse, trying to just turn those defensive linemen out on their blocking screen. At that time, George Rooks, the sophomore, made the hit. And again, it's third and long. And tough situation for Scott and Rutgers offense, and they've faced it a lot already in this ball game. And there it is. Rudd yard rushing minus one. Trying to live by the pass. This could be dangerous. There is Ernie. Ernie trying to scramble away. He's still got his feet going long. Look at no one downfield. Almost picked off that time by Sanquist. But boy, was he running for his life. Burnett was giving him all that he could ask for. Watch number 70, Rob Burnett, the senior top pass rusher, three-year starter, just a great effort, runs around. Number 75, Milano, the offensive tackle. He just never lets up. He's very active, highly regarded. Rob Burnett. Pellegrini in the ballgame now to kick. This is his third punt of the afternoon. It'll be fourth down and 12. Rutgers trailing 21-3. it up in the air where it touches the wind coming down with it walker walker at the 20 moves ahead and gets brought down at the 22 yard line a 40 yard punt on the play and syracuse will set up from their own 21. Welcome back to Rutgers Stadium. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. It's 21 to 3 in favor of Syracuse, but it's Rutgers home. Rutgers home coming in. They've not played well. The crowd is starting to get at it. You can hear the booze and the discontent. Here in this situation, up 21 to 3, Syracuse likes to do the unexpected. And don't be surprised if Shark comes up top and we go for the big one right now trying to bury Rutgers before the half. Rob Moore is split wide to the bottom of your screen. Wide to the top is Rob Carpenter. Each of those wide outs has caught a TV pass from Bill Shar today. Here comes the option. Toss to Owen. Owen down around the 30. Flag thrown into the play at the 31-yard line. It'll be a gain of about eight. Let's see where the flag goes. The flag should go probably against Syracuse. Some type of illegal block downfield. It's a hold. Okay. And that'll march back this eight-yard gain. That time he came up over the ball, Shard, and he was looking to throw the ball. He oh, saw the is. coverage. Syracuse oh, yeah. Rutgers was well off the ball, and he automatic to a running play because he knew he could get on the corner. He had pushed the support, the run support defense away. Holding offense, ten-yard penalty. Let's watch Rob Moore in this situation. Rob Moore coming down. He decides to block on 22. That's Marshall Roberts, the cornerback, and he is grabbing him and that's where the, the penalty was thrown exactly right there good Zach camera work to pick that up that puts Syracuse back at their own 22 and it's going to be first down they mark it off from the spot of the foul Char back to throw Screen pass, swinging it to Owens. It's incomplete and good thing. It was covered by Scott Miller. Good job by Miller, the big defensive tackle, the senior out of Elmwood Park from Jersey. Miller, the most active of the defensive lineman, number 99. Really came in, but had a knee injury last year, late in the season, missed a lot of time. Was bothered this week, but this year by injuries early on, and they felt he was just starting to come on. He's the one guy in their defense for Rutgers that can make a big play for him. That time he was out there covering on the screen. It's only the second incompletion that Shar has thrown thus far this afternoon. He's got two touchdowns to his credit. 133 yards coming into this drive. It's second and ten. Shaw back to throw. And he's caught, caught from behind. Got to use the clock here, Rutgers. You got to get the ball back. You got to use the clock. Chuck Paul is there with the sack. 
Chuck Paul comes in for Savoy. Savoy's the, 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 the run defensive tackle against the run. Paul gives him a little better pass rush. He's a veteran. He's played a lot of positions for him. Backed up, started when injuries occurred. Chuck Paul made the hit. Watch this, number 58. The pressure's good. They keep him in contain, and Paul comes from the left side off the block of number 64. But coming to the left guard and makes the hit. Brings up third down and 13. Ball's back on the 20-yard line of Syracuse. 221, clock rolling. Syracuse up 21 to 3. Shar swings it out to Kinnon at the 20. Kinnon still on his feet at the 30. Brought down at about the 31-yard line. Gain of 11, maybe 12. Clock still rolling, two minutes left. And a few times today, the Rutgers defense has held them, but they got a penalty early on to help them. But that time, they swarmed a little bit, and they ganged down, and kept Dwayne Kinnon inbounds. And uh, the clock is ticking on Rutgers. I'm sure they want to get something here before the half. Fourth down and about one. But, uh, Syracuse is kicking into a, a wind of about... What did we say it was? 20, about 20 miles an hour out of the south, and it hasn't slackened a bit as the clouds come over the field here. Officials are backing everywhere, everybody away from the ball. What has happened is that the ball is close enough for a measure. And so within, within a yard, they'll bring it in and take a look at it. Joe Shirk brings the chains in. See how close they are? Close. Well, very close. I would say six to eight inches there. <laughs> Joe Shirk makes the call. It's going to be fourth down an inch. Now, Syracuse may try, and Rutgers has got to be aware of it. Draw them off sides. And Ken Hawkins is going to come in to at least stand in punt formation. Back deep now is Marshall Roberts for Rutgers. A minute 45 left to go in the first half. I would expect exactly as you point out, as you look at Marshall Roberts, exactly as you point out, Bob, I wouldn't be surprised if Syracuse takes a long time to get the snap away. You look at Ken Hawkins on for his first punt of the day, maybe. Syracuse looks to test the patience of that Rutgers defensive line. Getting ready to cover this punt. They've got 10 men across. One back, and they don't look like they're going to drop anybody. Hawkins lined up back at his own 17. The a long snap. There's the kick. Hawkins into the win. Roberts at the 41. Roberts returns it out to about the 43-yard line. It's going to be a punt on the play of 27 yards. Not bad into the teeth of that win at a three-yard return. Greco in on the stop for Syracuse. Well, they've got 120 on the clock. They've got to put it up. They've got to try and come away and get another shot at the points before the half. But their offense has really been grabbing. There's been no consistency. And uh, really, Scott Ernie has been harassed by Syracuse and putting a lot of pressure on them. They're coming right now at four. Four wide outs. Ernie's scrambling for his life. Gets away from Wooden. Now lets it fly to the sideline to stop the clock and send it from a queen. Can't handle Terry Wooden. He's just too strong and too active for him. They hope today to get him off the line of scrimmage with their formation so he can even pass coverage. That time he just came after him and just never gave Scott Ernie a chance. And you're looking at one of the great defensive football players in the country from Hartford, Connecticut, the senior, 6'2", 232. He's very, very special. Finest linebacker ever. But a penalty on the play as well, a defensive ball. Defense, got an eligible receiver. It's a first down. Well, that's a great. Ten yards. That's a great. Down by the secondary against an eligible receiver downfield. It's a ten-yard penalty. It gives Rutgers field position at the 48. You talk about Terry Wooden. You're talking about a man who 12 tackles and two sacks against Penn State in a losing cost a week ago. He was All East last year. All American honorable mention two years in a row. He is a load to handle an outside linebacker. First and ten. Minute and twelve left in the half. Screen play set up, or is he scrambling for his life? Ernie, running room to the sideline. He gets knocked out of bounds by guess who? Terry Wooden. Terry Wooden, he was being chased down. And it's going to be an eight-yard gain. It'll bring up second down. That was a Rourke, number 96, who was really coming from the backside, the big defensive tackle in there. He was chasing him down. Wooden adjusted, pushed him out of bounds. Stop the clock. Second down and one. Watch this. 
There's, there's a rock 96 pushing and pressuring him from the back. He's running for his life, and now watch number 90 come over here and finally get him out of bounds. Back to throw again. Into the middle, it is complete to Melton. Melton at the 25, down to the 22-yard line. Now they got to use their timeout. They've got to take their timeout to take one right here. And they do. It's a 17-yard gain, stopping the clock with a timeout with 57 seconds left to go in the first half. Rutgers down 21-3. Looking for seven here. They'd love to have seven or eight by half. Though. One thing about their offense this year, their offense stammers and staggers, but they do come on in spurts, and they can put two, three touchdowns together in no time, particularly late in the ball game. They have to get a score here. One, because it brings them close, but more importantly, psychologically, they need a score. Dickie he's, Pearson wants well, some of his wants, players come to the sideline and talk to him during the timeout. He's got Walker over there, his cornerback. He's bringing his secondary over. That's what he's talking to him. The question now, does Syracuse go man? Do they go tight or do they stay in a zone coverage? And if they go tight, they can put pressure on him. There's Whiteman, Sean Whiteman, the senior out of Clearwater. He's one of the cornerbacks along with Greg Walker. The whole secondary comes over. They've got the nickel back in there, Daryl Jones, number 35. So they've got five defensive backs in the ball game. And then Ernie will put all of his weapons to use here. He's got, you see Randy Jackson, number 83. You see James Cann, who's a potential receiver out there. You also see Melton to the right of Ernie. Mike Body. Throws to his backs a lot out of his 107 passes completed thus far this season. Ernie had gone to his backs 40 times. But right now they need six. 57 seconds left in the first half. Syracuse 21 to three. Touchdowns by Carpenter, Moore, and Owens against the 50-yard Eastwood field goal. Here's Ernie. Rolling out, he'll tuck it under and run himself. Gets ahead to about the 16-yard line. He's got to huddle him right away. He's got to huddle him right away. Doesn't want to use a timeout here, so he's got two plays called. Clock rolling, 44 seconds left. Rutgers with no huddle. Second down and about four. 30 to the sideline. Complete to Melton, and he got out of bounds at the 12. Very close to a first down. Maybe shy of about a yard. Covering on the play, Sean Whiteman. The big point was he got out of bounds to stop the clock. He had two shots now, third down and two. Two shots here with 35 kicks still left in the, in the second quarter. And two timeouts remaining. 21 to three, Syracuse on top. Ernie again, third and two. Steps up, gets the first down, he's inside the 10. They'll have to stop the clock again. Now right, they've got to call a timeout right here. They've got to use the second one. They'll get a slight stoppage to move the chains after he got the first down inside the 10. And now they stop it with 28 seconds left and take their second timeout. And he's taking a beating, but he's hanging in there. What a competitor Scott Ernie is, the senior out of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, with part of that wet turf in his face. So here it is. They roll him, counter and roll him out. Big tackle pulling on the play with Milano, and then he knows he's got to run for the first down here. Good job. That might have been designed that way. Call the timeout to discuss now what we're going to do. 28 seconds left. We've got four shots of getting in the end zone. they got a timeout to use as well. Yards really not indicative of what he's done on this drive, but it overcomes some of the losses he's taken on sacks earlier. Scott Ernie, two years running, the most valuable player offensively for this team. He started from the fourth game of his freshman year, came in for an injured quarterback, and has stayed in the position ever since. A lot of people like what that young man brings to Rutgers offense. In many ways, he represents just about 90% of Rutgers offense. One of the things you like right in this situation is a tight end. A tight end that, because you may get man covered, a tight end that you can slip in and maybe get the ball to him in these situations for the score. For Rutgers, they really haven't used their tight end. They've only thrown to him twice. That's been Scott Blanche. One for a touchdown last week, the first time, for 16 yards. They're in the ball game now without a tight end. They've got four wide receivers. First and goal from the nine. 28 seconds left. Go back. Rutgers down. Five wide receivers. Rolling to his left. Ernie gets outside. Looks into the end zone and throws it away intended for McQueen. 
came with three receivers to one side, motion the final one over, four receivers to one side. Excellent job by Syracuse in covering his receivers, put pressure on him from the inside. Watch this. Here comes Scott Ernie rolling to his left. He's got four receivers out here. Good job by the linebacker. Here comes 55 Busey up to put pressure on him. The only man he could get was McQueen. He was in the back line of the end zone, but he had to elevate the ball to get it to him. He wasn't a chance. Looked like he had Melton open there for a moment, but Busey got in front of him so he couldn't see it. The drive started back to the Rutgers 42 after the punt. 22 seconds left, second down and goal. Ernie over the middle to Melton incomplete. He got behind the defender. Saying man-for-man -man coverage, Melton from the outside crosses underneath. Watch this. It's like a pick play. And Melton, 15, is going to come underneath, lose his man in the process. That's the play they wanted. He's open. Got to make the catch right there. Got to make the catch. He knows it. Stops the clock with 18 seconds left. Brings up third and goal from the nine. Syracuse, 21, Rutgers, three. Rutgers trying to make something happen before halftime. Back side. Here comes the throw. It is incomplete intended for Melton again at the two. And Ernie got level. Whiteman on the coverage. The cornerback was right there. The ball was a little bit behind behind the receiver. And cuts. Watch this. As he rolls to his left, you can see 15. Melton in the corner. Covered by number 22, Whiteman. There he is. Good job by Whiteman. Ball thrown behind him. Tough catch to make that time. Pressure from the backside created that. And that's what Syracuse has done. They put pressure on Scott Ernie. And now, without taking a chance, Dick Anderson feels, hey, we've got to get something here. He's going to go for three. Ball will be set right down the middle of the field for Geese. Lou hit from 50 yards out last time, setting a new career high for himself. 32 is his previous season high. This one will be of about 27. There's the kick. He's up. And it is good. So Rutgers comes away with a field goal as the cannon fires in the far end zone. Doug Giesler is accounted for all of the offense here for Rutgers this afternoon with 11 seconds left to go in the first half of play. It's 21-6 Syracuse. As you look at Giesler, but the, a drive that started from their own 42, they moved it downfield sprightly. Some big runs by Ernie himself. Next week, we move to Chestnut Hill in Massachusetts. Boston College, the Eagles, winning their first game a week ago against Temple, taking on West Virginia and Major Harris. Of course, Boston College with a new quarterback, Willie Hicks. Boston College starting off very tough, losing a lot of games, and then changing quarterbacks to Hicks, and now trying to put it together a little bit. And I think, uh, you know, they had a big win last week against Temple, and they've got Navy today. They're looking to regroup a little bit, and uh, it should be a tough one up there because uh, West Virginia, too, is struggling a little bit yeah. after uh, a tough loss, a big upset loss to Virginia Tech. And, of course, uh, the tie with Pittsburgh that kind of started the domino effect on West Virginia. They had an off week a week ago. They're playing Cincinnati today. As you look at Doug Easton, he's had a 50 and a 27-yard field goal to win the books. Rutgers trailing here by 50 to 21-6 at halftime. Easter onside kick. Went out of bounds before Rutgers could recover. It's going to be a penalty against Rutgers on the kick. Good intentions. It looked like uh, they had a man downfield to get it. That was James Jenkins. Looked like he was in pursuit of the ball. They're going to take the ball right here, and why not? Oh, the procedure on the kicking team will be declined. First down, White. Why not? With 11 seconds to go, Syracuse makes a wise choice here. They get the ball in great field position, at least put the ball up and try and come away with some points themselves. So it backfired on Rutgers. They tried to gamble here. Now Syracuse looking the ball with the ball sitting on the 49-yard line of Rutgers. It's on the left hash, or the right hash, rather, and it is, of course, uh, with a wind at Phil Shar's face of about 20 miles per hour, but he welcomes the opportunity. He's thrown the ball long a couple of times thus far this afternoon. By and large, it's been a control passing attack. He'll have three wide receivers to the top and one to the bottom. Moore is on bottom. Shar has time. Now scrambles up inside and gets brought down at the 50-yard line. Marty May is coming in for the tackle now and for Rutgers. And that was a big one by Marty May. They needed that because he was ready to throw it up. They could have come away with anything here. Shar is saying, I could have called timeout, but... Clock apparently ran out before the officials had noted it. Oh. Now Joe Shirk is going to bring him back and say, hey, wait a second. 
Syracuse is going to get one more play, it looks like. The determination is how much remains on the clock. I guess it's moved just as long as something. Dick Anderson headed to the sideline. Well, he is not happy either. The clock was stopped for a timeout with four seconds left on the clock. We're going to put four seconds back on the clock. Timeout Syracuse. And he, wants a penalty. and he wants a penalty for his team running on the field. That's what he's yelling and screaming at that official for. Dick McPherson there, the respectable coach next to him is George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, as they talk to Bill Shar and decide what they want to do with this last play. Now the clock at the end zone shows two seconds. Now it's back to four. It matters not. There's just one play left in this offense here as you see the scoreboard. Shows well, Syracuse leading 21-6 and the time remains. What Shar wants to do is have enough time to put the ball in the end zone and hope somebody comes up with it. Simple as that. But he's thrown against us some, uh, a little bit of a wind here, so that could be a factor. But Bill Shar has had a very good first half, and he's come under a lot of criticism this year, but first half of this ball game, he's executed well. He's thrown the ball extremely well. But uh, Syracuse has helped themselves by establishing a running game today using their pullback and their tailback. Defense is deep. They've got uh, the deep side of the field covered fairly well. The Rutgers, four men deep. Going to rush with three and just lay back with it. Cover the wide outs with one apiece. Shar back to throw and puts it up. Carpenter is down in the vicinity. It is intercepted by Rutgers at the nine-yard line. No, it's out of bounds. Backing out of bounds at the time was Mays, Rusty Mays, as time runs out on Syracuse in this drive. But the Orange men lead by a score of 21 to 6. Halftime, we've got lots of things coming up for you. Syracuse got their offense going, and they lead it here at intermission. AP Sports exclusive presentation of Great American Independent Football is brought to you by Jenny Light, some serious suds. By Howard Johnson, where the road warrior gets ready for the road. By Thumans, the deli best, makers of the official hot dog of Great American Independent Football. And by Infinity, a new concept in luxury cars. Welcome back to Piscataway, New Jersey, where Syracuse beating Rutgers here at halftime, 21 to 6, and they have grown up the offense, but here's the big play that turned things around early. First series of plays for Rutgers, they're moving downfield, and Scott Ernie's ready to put it up. Scott Ernie puts it up here, the drive is going, they're in control, he lays the ball up, he, he, and, and here comes the safety man, Rob Thompson, and he just steps in front of the receiver, McQueen makes the clutch interception, that's his sixth for the season, by the way which puts him third nationally, and that turned it around, and Syracuse went down the field and got some scores. As you look at these stats, there's a lot of things that pop at you from rushing yardage to passing yardage, but most importantly, time of possession. And that rushing yardage statistic for Syracuse, by the way, 105 yards is what they've averaged per game thus far this season. They've got that at halftime. They wanted to get their ground game untracked. They've done it thus far this afternoon, and they've done it with a fullback. Rutgers, in the meantime, with only 22 yards, and their leading rusher is Scott Ernie, the quarterback. They've not gotten close to what they wanted to accomplish offensively. Yes, and uh, really the pressure's been on Ernie throwing the football, too. Dick McPherson likes what he's seen. He likes what he's seen of Wayne Kennedy this far this afternoon. Ten carries, 65 yards on the day, and that has made the difference. When you look at Syracuse's years of success, it's because of a balanced ground attack involving not only the fullback, not only the halfback, but the quarterback. They haven't got the quarterback game going, but the other two have worked very well. On the other side, Dick Anderson knows, trailing 21 to 6. He's got to do something right away. He's got to hang in this ball game in the third period because Rutgers has come alive late in the game. They get the thing going so far. So Dick knows this, this next period is very important for his ball club. He's got to stay close and try and get some points. Let's take a look at Dwayne Kinn and we illustrate the point of the fullback. Well, we illustrate the point. Here it is. He drops the ball off. We've got to remember he's a fine receiver coming out of the backfield on this little screen action in the open field. He runs like a wide receiver. And this way he picks his blocking, gets the ball up the field, great field position, eventually led to another score for Syracuse. But he's been the key. 43, a junior out of Brooklyn, New York. Dwayne Kinnon and Dick McPherson gets his club out there. And now he's got the football to open up his second 
half, and uh, Rutgers will be kicking to him. Rutgers with the wind at their back. Syracuse going into the wind. Now it's important for the Rutgers defense to hold. Of course, Kinnon started as a wide receiver in the Syracuse system, moved to tailback, and then this year was moved to pullback with the departure of Dale Johnson. Doug Giesler has 50 and 27 yard field goals to his credit, kicks it away, and we're underway. Audrey Giesler, that's the goal line, brings it up, down the right sideline, cuts toward the middle of the field, and immediately gets hit and drilled. Right there by number 55, Todd Lane, looked to be the first man that got in through, and, and all of a sudden stopped Giesler's forward progress. Look at Bill Shar's performance. 13 out of 16. He had 52% of his passes coming in, but uh, he didn't turn it over this time. And Ernie, 10 for 21. Not a very good percentage, but he scrambled for every one of those 132 yards. Pressure on him constantly. He tried to move him out of the pocket, roll him, sprint him out, drop back. Syracuse coming on him all the time. Syracuse preferred their option to the second half. They've got the win at their face in the third quarter. Leading 21-6. Hand off to Owen. Owen straight ahead. Not much happening there off left tackle. Gets over the 25. You made a very good point. They deferred their option to the second half. They took the ball here in the second half. They're going into the win. That's why it's so important to control it. Because they know in the fourth period they're going to have the win. And that's a factor in the kicking game and everything else. But most importantly, if they can control it here and even get some points, they'll really be in, in, in excellent condition going into the fourth period. Having Rutgers to come from behind going into the win. There's Bill Shaw. He's checking that directory of plays. He can choose from. Maybe check off too. See it there on his left sleeve. He's back to throw with play action. Over the middle of the field it is. Incomplete intended for Rob Moore. Great coverage on Moore, but more importantly, 63 Spidell got his hand up in front of him and just distracted him enough. Watch this. They need the linebackers to help underneath. This is called a... This, he's just running a dig pattern. He comes down and he breaks it across the middle. This is it. And as he comes, watch on the left on the left side of the screen. We just missed it. Spidell, number 63, was there with his hand just enough to get in front of him. Third down and five coming up. Ball at the 28-yard line of Syracuse. Syracuse leading 21-6, just underway, second half. Dees is tied in and a wing. Back to throw. Flags are thrown. Whistles blown. And Owen caught the ball near the 30-yard line. But this one's going to be called back. And it's going to be called back. The flag is thrown in the defensive backfield. And let's see the referee. I'm sure. Big ball foul. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Tough, tough penalty. Again, getting back to third down. Syracuse. Excellent all day in converting the third down plays, keeping drives alive. Six out of seven back to third down. There's Dick McPherson. He's going to town on that program. Curling it around. Are you a tough guy when you were coaching at Connecticut and Prop and uh, Princeton? Tough guy in those programs. Rip him up. You know, in programs, other things. I just hope you read the ad. Official. <laughs> Shard to throw in third and ten. Too much time. Uh-oh. Looking downfield. He's got Owens, but also Rutgers. And Owens caught the ball and stepped out at the 40-yard line. Oh! No, no. But he's, he's going to say, he before. said he's going to catch. He caught the ball out of bounds. That's what he's going to say. Great field position there. Number 37 for Rutgers. Had him all the way down the field. That's the legs, the strong safety. And he was with Owens, picking him up, coming out of the backfield. But it's a great effort by Owens. Watch this. He's, he's running his tail back up the side, and here comes 37, Celez. Celez is right there with him, and here's the play. And watch him take the ball away and see his right foot on the line. I beg your pardon. I had Celez. That was Marshall Roberts, the cornerback, who had him in coverage. So good defensive series, aided by the penalty by Syracuse that time. Fourth down and 10. Hawkins on for his second punt of the game, and Marshall Roberts back to his seat. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. They drop off three. He's got a return on into the win, get beaten down their midfield. Roberts on his way. One man and down to the 31-yard line. Hawkins, the punter, has to make the stop, but great field position for Rutgers to start the second half. Great return, good blocking on the, on the, on the outside. And Roberts almost had this thing all the way, and Hawkins made the tackle, but you're right. They've got good field position. Watch the blocking set up here. 
He's kicking into the wind, remember. The coverage is right there. There's a block on 51, the center. He gets outside beyond D's, number 86, the tight end, and there is the last man for him. He's got the ball back on the 30-yard line, and a great opportunity for Rutgers. Winded their back. Let's see what they can do. 28-yard punt, a 22-yard return. Here's Ernie, Syracuse territory. Scrambling, firing a pass complete to McQueen at the 16. McQueen brought down by Thompson, Whiteman, and Walker. It's going to be a nice gain on the play of 14 yards. The ability to Ernie to get outside on the roll. That time created a problem for the Syracuse defense because once he's on the corner, he can come up field and deliver the ball. McQueen came back to make the catch. Big play. He's got to try and contain him, but he does that so effectively. He puts a lot of pressure. And the reason it's hard to contain him, he's got the field spread. He's got receivers out there. Green came in as a leading receiver. 26 passes from Ernie coming into the ball game. That's his first reception of the day. Here's the draw to Body. He's in for a touchdown. Mike Body from 16 yards out and a dramatic change of affairs. They're going for two. They're going to go for two here. Very important. It's 21 12. This is what Rutgers needed to get back in the ball game. Dick McPherson knows he didn't want that to happen that soon. Mike Body scores. That's his fourth touchdown thus far this season. All of them have been on the ground. Gets this uh, homecoming crowd back into the ball game. They haven't been in it at all up to this point. Mike Body, give him a lot of credit. He's playing hurt. We know he's got a leg problem. He's been hurting for the last couple of weeks. Only a second carry of the afternoon. Of course, Rutgers going for two. This will pull them within seven if they're successful. Three wide receivers to the top. Make it four now. Going that side is Ernie. Chased by Bavaro. Comes across. It's complete. The body in the end zone. Rutgers is within seven. Just a minute and a half into the second half. Okay, as you look at Mike Body, and he's done it all right here. The setup, they got three receivers to the left side of the screen. They run a little counter draw action. They trap, actually, and they got Body, and they trap the big tackle Rooks that time, and he gets into the end zone clean, beautifully executed by the offensive line. Change the complexion of the ball game as Rutgers pulls it within a touchdown. Let's look at it again. Mike Body on the draw. Counter action as he comes back here. Good block down field for him by number 16, uh, by number 76, High Rose. He makes the block into the end zone, and that's the score. And that got him back, and he's excited. He's a senior. He wants this one badly. And here's the uh, two-point try. Watch number 31 slip into the flat here. Pressure by Busey and Bavaro, and he just puts it up, and Body had flipped off, gotten open, and... To Scott Ernie's credit, he found them, and Rutgers is back in this football game. Now it's a question of what their defense can do against the Syracuse offense. The run by Body, the longest touchdown run by Rutgers thus far this season, but it's their ninth rushing touchdown as opposed to six TD passes. So while there's an imbalance in yardage, certainly not in score. Eastler with a kick. Ishmael at the six. Short kick. He's up. They get sandwiched at the 21-yard line. Big play there, a nice tackle made on the play by Eric Gearing and Glenn Miller. And you can see it changing, and you often see the attitude of a team in the special teams, how they cover punt, how they tackle. And you can see the Rangers special teams are up for this one. Now the test is on their defense, as we said. Dick Anderson. He's talking to his offensive coaches upstairs right now because that's, his, uh, that's the offensive phone he's on right now. First and 10, Syracuse. Sitting at their own 22-yard line. Up 21 points. Shaw to the fullback, Kinnon. Kinnon sprints outside, but can't get loose. And Rutgers answers the bell defensively in the second half. Sellers was the first man to make the stop. Fullback game that had worked so well first half, not only rushing up through, but getting him loose in the secondary for screen passes. Second down and 10, and this reverts to an old problem that Syracuse had complained to before, and that is not getting it up on first. Out of the eye, play action, there's the option toss to Owens, and Owens is cracked. Tim Lester making a great individual play to slow him down while everybody 
getting caught up, but the play was really strung out. What makes that most effective is when the quarterback keeps the ball and as he strings it out, everybody can react to the football. Watch this. Shark comes down. A fake to the fullback. That is the freeze option. That's the first step. And there's a good job by 99 Miller on the quarterback, which permits 98 Lester to come up and take the trail of the pitch man. And it was perfectly executed. Third down, eight yards to Syracuse. Again, Billy Shaw in a critical situation early here in the third period. Six for eight now, third down conversion. Back to throw. Looking deep for more. Double coverage. More comes back at the ball. Complete at the 35 of Lester. And that's the ability of Rob Moore. That ball was underthrown into the wing. Rutgers defenders never look back and caught the ball. This kid does it all the time, and that's the difference. The big play. When you isolate on him and watch him at the top of the screen, he's going against Marshall Roberts. And right away, he's being picked up by 37. That's Sellers. So he's being double teamed, and there he goes. But he sees the football. Sellers never controls it. He's so conscious of his speed going deep. He comes back, makes the play, and that's what's kept Syracuse close with a lot of people. That's Rob Moore. 41 yards downfield on that catch by Moore. He's already got a touchdown catch of six yards. On the option, Shaw to Owens. Owens, 30, driven out of bounds. He'll knock him out in about the 27-yard line, and it's going to be a game of close to eight. What a great job of blocking downfield. Again, Rob Moore, 14, the wide receiver, blocking on the cornerback. who's responsible for coming up and making that tackle, but he kept them off the kept him off the line of scrimmage and gave Owens a chance to make good yardage. And right away it turns around. But the big play is what's done it. And Rob Moore is the big play guy for Syracuse. 11-23 left to go on the third. Syracuse 21-14 and they're moving the football. They're looking at second and two at the 27. In Rutgers territory. Passing set, but it's going to be the handoff to Owens. Owens Trying to get the first down and does not have it. Making a great stop to the sideline is Williams. Williams the sophomore, one of the most highly recruited players Rutgers has had in recent years from down in Burlington, New Jersey, number 92. Very quick. Watch him. And he's going to come up here and make a good open field tackle right there to keep this thing to a loss. Big play there by Sean Williams, only a sophomore. There you see him. Nice play by Williams who held his spot at home against Michael Owens. Third down, about two. Here is Owens. This time he's got the first down. He's over the 25-yard line, down to about the 24. Judovich is in on the stop as well as Sellis. Big first down for Syracuse as they keep moving. Dick Anderson wonders. The big play got him again. Big first down because they're moving behind a big or experienced offensive line as Dick McPherson talks to his associate head coach there, Bill Max Billy Maxwell. Been with him for many years together with Massachusetts. He went back for many, many years. First and ten at the 23 of Rutgers. And off of Owen. Owen, the halfback team featured here in the second half. He jumps to the 19. It's a gain of four. Right down by... Webster. Oh, Leonardo Webster on the tackle as you look at Michael Owens. Coming in here represented 75% of their ground. You can see the tempo picking up. Even though Syracuse is moving the ball, Rutgers defensively is playing tougher and quicker and making bigger hits. And they got to do that to stay in the game and try to get a break. Second and six of the 19. the fullback Kinnon. First carry of the second half. He falls ahead. He's short of the first down. And they mark his forward progress to the 15-yard line. Webster in on the stop with Judovic. Also the young man Williams, Sean Williams, coming up with a play as well. 91, 92, and 93 as you look at Dwayne Kinnon. When they moved him to fullback, they thought that was the best move they made this year. They felt they, got, they finally found a big back with running ability and pass catching ability. He hasn't been utilized, but today they've given him the football and he's done the job. Game of four, third and two from the 15. Both ends in tight. Full house back. Shaw gives to Owens. Owens, first down. Down to the 10. 
That's what you love. You come up third and one, third and two in the four down zone. You're in a controlling situation there. They did it that time. They've just been doing a great job now in this last two series, getting themselves in good third down situations. Michael Owens, the explosive guy, came into this game averaging about 4.7 yards per carry. Four TDs. Syracuse with three down edge and first down. Looking at first and ten from just outside the ten. Kinnon with the ball. Straight ahead. Wrestled down by Bob Spidell at the eight-yard line. Gain of close to three. They still can get a first down inside the one. Syracuse started it off with Carpenter snaring a 41-yard pass from Bill Shar. Less than a minute to go in the first. Then Rob Moore took in a six-yard pass from Shar midway through the second. The two-point conversion pass. Two more was good. Giesler hit a 50-yard field goal for Rutgers as Dick McPherson really looks on. Then Syracuse got another touchdown from Owens. One yard out. Three, two wide receivers to the top side. Second down and about seven. Option. Yard to Owens. Owens driven out of bounds. They'll mark him out at the three. And on the play of four yards. Spread the field. They, they put their wide receivers to the wide side of the field. They run the option back away from it, knowing that Rutgers is going to play, overplay themselves to the wide side of the field. Watch it from the low angle here. The drive to the pullback, fake the Kinnon. Now he comes down the line, puts it right on the corner, and there's the play. And he gets up inside, gets enough yardage. And again, they're looking at third down and two with the ball inside the five-yard line. They get a first down inside the one. You look at Michael Owen. Carpenters to the top of your screen. More to the bottom. Gedney, the tight end, lines up over there, strong to the left. Looking right at Shaw, into the sun, complete to Kennan. Kennan, they say he got in. He's in for a touchdown. Just inside the goal line. Last time they came down, they threw to the to the 14 more, the, the split end coming in on a slant pattern. They ran the same pattern, but they slipped the fullback out behind them and dumped it off to him, forcing a linebacker to try and come up and make the hit. Beautiful drive by, by Syracuse. Bill Shar again, good execution. Big play by Rob Moore. Donald in the hole as Shar gets a congratulatory message from Dick McPherson. And not only is Bill Maxwell associate head coach, but he's especially in charge of the quarterback. He's got to be happy with things. It's John Biscuit comes in to kick. There's the kick. It is up, and it is good. 7.51 left in the third, and let's see Dwayne Kimmon stretch for the end zone. There he is, 43, catches the ball. There comes Spidell, a linebacker, trying to catch him, get up to him, but watch him stretch out. That's close. Looks to me like he just got in there. Just barely did. 28-14, we now pause for a word from your local state. Zone. Again, looking from the end zone as Bill Shar finds Dwayne Kinnon, and this is close. He drops it off to him right there in the corner. He slipped out. The linebacker, Spidell, responsible for him, comes in late. It looks like his right foot might have hit the line, but he stretched across the end zone beforehand and got the touchdown. Great effort on the part of um, the big fullback, Dwayne Kinnon, from Brooklyn, New York. There it is, 12 plays. They traveled 78 yards, and he did it very effectively with a big bomb, excuse me, the big pass play to uh, Rob Moore, and they got a score, and they're ahead by two touchdowns, 28-14. Third touchdown pass of the day for Shaw. Biscuit to kick. Allen looping under it at the 12. Up to the 20. And it's wrestled down. Out and around the 45-yard line, 35-yard line, rather. And it's a tackle made on the play by Casey Sirowich. As Scott Ernie gets set come back out onto the football field. It's a nice return of about 23 yards. So, Scott Ernie has the wind at his back, and Allen comes off the field rather gingerly. He's been banged around a lot this afternoon. Made a big tackle on the far sidelines in the first half. He paid a price on it. Sun starting to come out. And that ends on to your right. Ernie to pass out of that zone. For the flats, it is incomplete to Mike Body. Good coverage that time. Coming over to, to, to cover Body was number 90, Terry Wood, the linebacker. He was right there. Body was looking back into that zone to try and catch the ball. There he is. 17 and a half sacks and six interceptions. And that is a great illustration of how they use Terry Wood. No huddle. 
Ernie comes out. Second down and 10. And the 36. And they get a flag. And that was Ernie's fault that time. He backed away before the snap. He was so anxious. They tried to surprise him with no huddle. Came up with three receivers to one side. And he blew it. That has quieted the crowd. The touchdown by Kinnon took the crowd. Big ball foul. Failing a procedure. Offense. It's still first. It's second down. It is second down. Packed house here at Rutgers. 32,000 estimated. This stadium holds about 30,000. That overflow all over the place. Ringing the outside of the stadium to see this game. At the half, we were only seven. Nothing. Second down and 15. Ball back at the 31-yard line. Ernie, sprint out left, going back to the right. As Jackson downfield, it is incomplete out of bounds. Great coverage on the play. He threw back to Jackson. He sprinted to his left and threw back to Jackson, the speedster, up the right side. Watch this as we watch the pick up here. The key guy, number 26, is Bob Reed, who comes into the middle. Here, here's the play back to Jackson as he's running up the sideline. There's 26, Bob Reed, in good field position, gets his hands up, and almost comes away with the interception. Boy, Jackson had to make, had to pick it right out of there. Usman Bob Reed, freshman out of Montreal. Same hometown as Tommy King, great wide receiver who played here a couple of years ago at Syracuse. Originally from the French West, West Indies. Third down. Looks like encroachment by Syracuse. Went on the, instead of going on the movement of the ball, he went on the sound. The quarterback raised his voice and got him offside. So it goes against the defense. He gets the five yards back, but again, dead ball foul. Down. Defense, contact, five-yard penalty. Now they're looking at third down again. It's third and long, though. Third and 10 instead of third and 15. Moves the ball out to the 36-yard line. May not change the call any for Scott Ernie. See his performance on the afternoon. Picked off once. Three wide receivers to the bottom side of the formation. Back to throw. Big rush on. Ernie scrambling. Goes behind the formation to Jackson. He made the catch. Out of bounds. He did not have control of it before he went out. That was that was not the primary receiver. He was looking up field here to try and get number five, Tyrone McQueen. He was covered. He finally found Jackson on the opposite side of the field to throw back. He made the catch. Great catch. But his, his impetus took him out of bounds. And he rushed this year, forced the kick in the end. 7.25 on the clock. The wind at their back. They did not capitalize on it. Got to punt the ball back to Syracuse. Saw the concern of Dick McPherson. Ernie, very dangerous when he has to get out there and have a lift. Pellegrini with a kick, short kick. Walker taking it at the 30, and immediately he is brought down. Nice tackle made on the play. Pat Udovich was in as well as Chris Piquel on the special team coverage as Walker heads to the sideline. They start to find some places in the bushes to sit and watch this one. It's 28-14, 7-18 left to go in the third quarter here at Rutgers, Syracuse. Half of Great American Independent Football is brought to you in part by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Let's watch this almost catch. Yeah, as he throws back and he finds Randy Jackson. Here's the catch, but look at him. He does not have control as he goes out of bounds. Official attendance here this afternoon, we're told now 29,276. So uh, they're going to come up shy as far as the record crowd is concerned. Shaw, first and ten. Pumps twice, pulls out of the pocket, now has to pull out for his own life here. The 35, brought down by Spidell at the 36-yard line. It'll be a gain on the play of six yards for, for Bill Shaw. Excellent move by Shaw. He was looking to go quickly to the outside of his wide receivers. It wasn't there. Brought the ball down. He had a lot of pressure on him, but he scrambled. He's not the most gifted runner, but he got six yards in the play. He'll take that anytime. He has not made many mistakes this afternoon. He's he's had a very nice ball game. The only one that really you can look at was uh, that mistake inside the five-yard line. He threw the ball into a fumble situation as he tried to automatic at the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, Bill Shar has been outstanding. Three wide receivers to the top side on second and four. Flat pass out there to Carpenter, complete. 
leaps over a man for the first down and is brought down at the 46-yard line. That's called a quick screen or a flip screen. They just motion the back out. That time it was number 44 Owens to create three receivers, and they drop the wide receiver in the slot. Carpenter back. They get the ball to him. The other two guys release. With that kind of speed, Carpenter has it. Got good yardage in the first down. Carpenter saw his numbers on the day. He's thrown a touchdown pass as far as the season. And he caught one earlier. You split wide to the bottom of your screen on first and ten. Syracuse. Shaw hands off to Owen. Owen slices through. Goes down on the grass with Tim Lester. Out over the 50-yard line to the 45 of Rutgers, and it's going to be a nice gain of about seven yards. Next week, we go to Boston and see Boston College taking on West Virginia. High noon on most of these stations. Contrast with quarterbacks in terms of experience, but Major Harris might see a clone of himself in Willie Hicks. Willie really brings a, a spontaneity to the Boston College offense that I know Jeff likes to see. You look at Michael Owens, his report card up there. And off goes straight ahead to Dwayne Kennan, who's working his way close to the first down. Spidell on the stop again. Also in on the play is going to be Webster. Now Syracuse back into the rhythm, into the, they've got their offense going, running the football, tailback, fullback, throwing the football. Their wide receivers, they've got a lot of balance. Bill Shaw gave a lot of confidence today. He's running that team, and he's looking, you know, he's really doing the job that everybody expects him. This is a comparison of Kinnon today as opposed to what he's done up to this point. You can see that's the type of offensive production they like out of their fullback at Syracuse. They're up 21, 28 to 14. Here's Shaw to throw long, looking for Carpenter in single coverage. He's got him! Touchdown, Syracuse! Forty-two yard touchdown catch. His second of the day for Rob Carpenter, and the Orange been lead by twenty. He had two people there. He had the cornerback Mays, and he had the safety Vaughn McCoy. He split them both. McCoy should have been deeper than the receiver. He never did. The ball was thrown and stretched him out. He made a sensational catch to make the, to get the touchdown. Absolutely perfect execution on the part of the quarterback Shar and the receiver Carpenter and that's what they've got. They've got Moore and Carpenter. You forget about Carpenter but he's outstanding. Good speed. Came in, in this ball game averaging over 12 yards per catch. Got seven catches thus far and two touchdowns this afternoon. It's Biscuit. Zoom our regular program schedule. Uh, for short yardage and he does not get the first down to Richie. Stops him in his tracks at the 37th yard line. They've run that play a lot successfully, but now Syracuse is starting to look for it. 2.37 left to go in the third quarter. We're here at Rutgers Stadium, Syracuse leading Rutgers 35-14, but the Scarlet Knights are moving. They have the ball third down and two at the Syracuse 39 yard line. to his left. Sets up, fires to can complete. Got the first down of the 33-yard line. Controlled passing game. That time he went to the short receiver, wanted to get him the football right away, give him a chance to get up field, and Jimmy Cannon did exactly that and kept the drive alive, got the first down. This Rutgers drive started at the 30, by the way. If you could criticize Rutgers today, it looks like they're trying to go a little too deep at times with their passing game. It's better for them to, to almost use the small, the short passing game to control the football. Spreading right this time. Here's Ernie trying to get away from pressure. LeBaron chasing it down. He throws it. It is incomplete. Downfield intended for Cam, but boy, LeBaron and Burnett were all over Scott Ernie. Brian LeBaron comes in in the passing situation. He's a good defender. That time he switched up, and he's got the speed on the corner. Watch this, number 40, and watch Ernie being pressured. 55, Busey, the linebacker, and LeBaron coming from his outside linebacker position. And that's the way it's been all day for Scott Ernie. He has been scrambling all day. He's been looking a lot at, George, at uh, Burnett, Rob Burnett. Uh, number 70 jersey all afternoon. Giles is into the backfield now. For Rutgers in place of Mike Body. Scott Ernie brings the start of Knights up to the line. Second and ten. Back to throw. Over the middle, it is incomplete. And it's 
intended for Chris Roberts out of Abington, Pennsylvania. That's a tough one for him. That was, a, that was there. If he catches the ball, he's going to get upfield, make good yardage. They clear out three wide receivers and watch 26 Roberts come around just sort of curl inside. The control pass, get it to him in front of the linebackers, try and get five or six yards. He wanted to run before he caught it. He was just substituting the game for that play, and he's staying in right now. Minute 45 left to go in the third. Syracuse 35-14 over Rutgers. Rutgers with the ball, trying to keep things going at the Syracuse 33. Third down. Here's the pass. Complete again to Roberts. Roberts this time goes ahead, and he's close to the first down. Making the stop is Pomaro. And that's why he's in the ball game. He's got great speed, Robert. They got him the ball, and they forced the linebacker to try and cover him. Pomaro did a great job of making the play from behind because he was on for a bigger game. Here he comes. He slips right out to the flat. There he is, 26 to the left of the screen. Catches the ball. Pomaro from the backside trying to catch up to him. Makes the hit, but not before Rutgers has got another first down. Roberts making the 11-yard gain. Second pass thrown in his direction. First and 10 at the 23. Ernie to the flash to Can, complete at the 19. Rob Thompson in on the play for Syracuse. Three receivers to one side. That time Can out of the backfield, flanked out there. Free safety comes up to make the hit. But because Rutgers is not effective in the ground game, they have to go to the control passing attack to get what they normally would. They're doing a lot considering the fact that they're almost saying to you we're going to throw on every down. We're behind by three touchdowns, and that's what we're doing offensively all season. Second and eight from the 20. Final minute of the third, Ernie scrambling. Ernie inside the 10-yard line. He's got another first down. The Richie is there to make the stop, also scrambling back David Bavaro, but Scott Ernie is now the leading rusher in this ball game. Three receivers to the top of the screen, they're just driving off zone coverage right here, and man, excuse me, man coverage, everybody's got a man, and as they come off, Ernie just sees that and almost figured on running the football, knowing what he's going to get for a rush, a four-man rush. He gets credit to Scott Ernie, it hasn't been a great day for him, but without him, they're never in the ball game. No time he carried it, great good yard, he's got the first down. Right now, they're knocking on the door inside the 10-yard line. 31 seconds remaining in the third. Draw play, body, and Syracuse has that snuffed out. A little counter, and George Rooks is there to bring him down. That's the one that scored for him the last time they had possession down in here deep, but that time they closed it off. Clock moving, 15 seconds left in the third quarter. They're going to let this clock run out. And, uh, yeah, they're going to let this clock run out before they run out of then they'll be with the wind at their face here in the fourth. One second left, and the period ends. So the third quarter has come to a close, and Syracuse, strong still, leading 35-14. We now pause for a word from your local station. Welcome back to Rutgers Stadium at Piscataway, New Jersey. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. Ahead of you, you look at the game stats. Syracuse leading 35-14, and one good reason why is total offense and time of possession. Sure does. Jumps right out at you, and they've been doing it on the ground and also picking up in that last drive, 279 yards after. Syracuse came in here averaging 360 yards total offense. Right now, Rutgers second and goal from the 11th. Ernie rolls to the wide side. LeBaron forces him in, he makes the catch to get to Tyrell McQueen at the eight. He gave it to him, he came back to the football and he made a great catch. He was really being harassed back there by the quarterback, Greg Walker, and undercover by number 55, Busey, the linebacker. He made the catch, short gain, stopped second down and nine. The ball sitting on the nine-yard line, they got to go nine yards to get the first down and the touchdown. Well, here by 21, 35-14. Rutgers started this drive on their own 30-yard line. Queen is a slot to the top side. No backs in the backfield. Five men wide. Here comes Ernie. Ernie scrambling. Gets rid of it. Just as he got drilled by Brian LeBaron. They came after him. They were right up in his face. LeBaron and also Burnett. They could not control Rob Burnett, the defensive tackle, and Scott Ernie never had a chance to get this pass off. Watch this as he rolls to his left. No backs in the backfield. Three receivers to the left side. There's number 40. There's number 70 from the backside. Inside pressure. What a job. Great job defensively. They're just coming after him. They 
feel confident enough with their defensive backs to play man for man. Now, here we go. It's fourth down and nine. Dick Anderson has decided he's got to go for a touchdown. He's not going to go for three. Here it is. 14-49 left to go on the football game. Syracuse 35-14. Rutgers, fourth and goal at the nine. One back for protection this time. Going over the middle. It is complete touchdown to Gary Melton. Big play and a great job of protecting for Scott Ernie that time. Instead of sprinting him where they've gotten a lot of pressure in his face, they decided to drop him back, and they let Melton come underneath, man coverage, running underneath. He had good position on the defender. Scott Ernie put the ball in. This time, Melton held it and got in the end zone. Nine-yard pass play at the 14-45 mark. Eastler is on to kick the extra point. Holds Rutgers now to within 15. Out of the hold of Garantano. Here's the kick, gets up. It's checked off to the side, no good. Wide to the left side. So the extra point by Giesler is missed. So far this season, that's his third miss of the year. Let's take a look at the pass by Ernie again. Watch this, he's going to drop right back from us. And you're going to see from the right side of the screen, number 15 come across Melton. Good protection up front, giving Ernie a chance. As he drops back here, Melton comes right across the middle. He's got position on the defender. That's number 22, Whiteman, the cornerback, for the score. Some temporary joy here for Rutgers as they chip away at the Syracuse lead. There's Gary Melton, latest man to cross into the end zone for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. They march 18 plays from their own 30. Took him 5-13 to do it, and Scott Ernie found his man, his first touchdown pass of the day. Gary Melton, intended receiver. He pulled it through. That's his first touchdown of the season, as a matter of fact. And Rutgers now is within 15 with plenty of time left. 20 to 35. Syracuse out on top. He's the kick. Eastman's line shot is recovered at the 31-yard line by LeBaron. Well, that's not LeBaron. Moving ahead. That is going to be Kevin Green, your running back. He makes it out over the 40-yard line of the 42, so the attempt at making Syracuse handle the ball did not succeed. Did not succeed. They did not get the, the, the punt to bounce and get deep enough, and now Syracuse is looking at the great field position, first and 10 on their own 42-yard line. Win to Bill Shard's back. He's tied a school record for touchdown passes in the game with four today. He's only been incomplete five times. Something like 23 attempts. Shar gives the point. Straight ahead. He's close to midfield. Nice gain of about eight yards. Six yards, though. Rutgers has been a late team, and they're going to have to be a fourth quarter team this afternoon. It'll be six points in the fourth quarter. And that's hurt them because they've had to come back. They're usually behind, and they've got to really do wonders in the fourth period to win a game or get back in the game. They're going to have to do it today. It's not the way you want to do it if you can help. We're down 26-10 to Kentucky a week ago. Came back and lost 33-26. Second down and five at the 48. Shaw looking to his wide out once more. Step for step. And it is incomplete a flag is going to be thrown on the play. I've got a feeling this may be offensive passing. I think that's, that's exactly what the call is. The defender was there and slowed down to go back to the ball, and Moore bounced him as he went down. And he's looking at it to say, what else could I do? I was trying to get to the football also. But that's going to be the call. Here's Moore running deep. Here's the pass. It's underthrown again. And the defender in this case, Marshall Roberts. Marshall Roberts, the cornerback, 22, slowed down to catch it, and they caught him for it. And Dick uh, McPherson said, well, Dick McPherson hasn't had an awful lot to smile about in Anderson second quarter. Offense, 15 yards, loss of down. That's the tough part of it, the loss of down. So once again, Bill Shard now is looking at the third down. I was say, Dick McPherson hasn't had an awful lot to cheer about in the last second halves of the last three ball games. His club has looked good in the first half. This afternoon, this penalty aside, his club has looked good all the way through. They lead 35 to 20. They're looking at a loss of down here and a penalty to boot. And of course, remember at the end 
of this game. The conclusion will be selecting a shit most valuable player from each team. As Dick Anderson surveys the field from the Rutgers sideline. His team defensively looking at third and 20. Ball set back on the Syracuse 33 yard line. That's going to be a blessing for the defense. Rutgers defense really has not come up with a big play today. The turnover, the interception, the fumble they needed desperately now. And Shaw, third down and long. Has time. Steps up, goes incomplete to get me as tight end. Good it coverage in the secondary, excuse me, Steve. Good coverage deep. They had both Carpenter and Moore running deep. The cornerback gave him good support there, and he was forced to come to his tight end and threw the ball a little bit behind Gedney. Gedney stays out there on the punt coverage. Hawkins is back to kick. We haven't seen much of Hawkins uh, since early in the game. He's been uh, third down execution of Syracuse. He's kept them in the drive. They haven't really had to punt the ball that much. This is Hawkins' third appearance of the afternoon. He's got the wind at his back this time. Rutgers with 10 men on the line. There's the kick. Ooh, oh, it's a nice one. Roberts swoops under it at the 26. Wall set up. Almost got mowed under by his own man after the 39-yard line. So it's a 40-yard punt and a 14-yard return, and Rutgers sets up now first and 10. And they'll have the football out of the 38-yard line in their own territory. If you look at Marshall Roberts. You mentioned it. There's plenty of time left for Rutgers if they can get up the field and get a score here. There's over 30, almost 14 minutes left here in the fourth period. They've got plenty of time. The only thing they've got to contend with is a little bit of a win. Let's see if it affects Ernie, who we know is going to put the ball up. He's kind of forsaken anything on the ground here to get his team back in position. Going back to throw again. As a safety valve out there, and pass intended for Jackson, and he was covered by Bari, Usman Bari. Nice coverage. As you look at Bari, the freshman out of Montreal. Scores from around the country. Duke out to a 22-3 lead on Maryland, and lead at 32-16 at College Park. Here's a big one, Alabama. In the fourth period, moving away from Tennessee, 38-24. And Illinois and Michigan State are tied at seven. Rutgers now looking at second and ten. Pass to the flats to the Queen incomplete. And over there to make sure it stayed that way was Sean Whiteman. Whiteman was right there. The ball was up. That's the kind of play where a receiver can really get destroyed. You stretch him out that time. Two, two series here, two plays right here. Rutgers looking at third and ten. North Carolina. Georgia Tech that came back from a win over Clemson. And there is a big one in the third quarter. Need. Beating Boston College 24-16. Undoubtedly, the Eagles are having trouble stopping a wishbone. Army ahead of Lafayette, too. Army ahead 27-13 over Lafayette. Dave, the West Point. Dave of the Service Academy Bowl so far. Ernie steps up, fires an interception. Picked up by Rooks. Rooks at the 30-yard line. Dropped at the 29. First time he had one nearly go into his hands early in the first half. This time he held on and comes up with a big, big turnover. Big play, good field position for Rutgers. They don't do anything with the field position. Scott Ernie just puts the ball up here, and the big guy, 91, the sophomore out of White Plains, New York. Watch number 91 on your screen. He drops off. See, he's looking for draw. He's, he's got a responsibility. Instead, he finds himself in a great position to intercept the ball. We now pause for a word from your local station. Knee technique. Let's see it here. But in the scheme of every defense, people have different responsibilities. Here, third and long, he was dropping, looking for a draw play. He may have had the responsibility if they ran the draw to tackle. Instead, he looked up, the ball was there, he made the catch, and he got his, uh, himself on television doing it. It's great. It's his first interception. And the second interception of Scott Ernie this afternoon. Syracuse sets up at the Rutgers 29-yard line, first and 10. And this is Kinnon. Fullback rips a hole off right guard over the 25 down to the 22-yard line. It's been a big day for Dwayne Kinnon. He's really come alive running the football inside. That will be something that opponents of Syracuse the rest of the way have to contend with. The fact that they've really given the ball to the fullback and did it successfully. And I think that puts a, a whole new dimension of pressure on your defense. You've got to remember the fullback is back in their offense. Well, 56 to go. Syracuse up 35-20. Trying to take advantage of a Rutgers turnover. This is Owens and Marty May. Got him wrapped up near the line of scrimmage. Gain of maybe a yard and a half. 
bring up third down and short. Mays has been in a lot of stops today, and Owens has had himself a nice day. Marty Mays is not the biggest guy to play in there at 5'11", 245, but he reads well, and he plays off the block, and that time he came off the block and took the big back, Owens down. It's a very short game. Simon Fears. Wide receivers coach motioning in the plays beside Dick McPherson. Third down and two. And now Bill Shaw doesn't like what he sees in the defensive formation and calls timeout. Early one of Syracuse's three here in the second half. With 12.04 left to go in the ball game. He'll march to the sidelines and talk things over with Dick McPherson. So it's Syracuse leading Rutgers by a score of 35 to 20 and looking at a big third down play on the Rutgers 21 yard line. Most people haven't been too busy today. That cannon is supposed to go off every time Rutgers crosses the end zone, but uh, you can see there will be a surplus of powder after this. Or at least to this point, unless Rutgers turns around quickly here in this ball game, trailing. 35-20, they're on defense. Syracuse at 32. And off Owens. There's the two, and there's Moore. Headed for the end zone. Touchdown, Syracuse. Interesting call. They came in with two tight ends, Gedney and Dees, and they had one wide flanker. I backfield ran a little counter action, and Owens just ran over the right side of Bednars and Turnell Sims and John Flannery the center, and he was gone. 21 yards out, his second touchdown of the day for Michael Owens, who is approaching the 100-yard mark. Matter of fact, he crossed it with that play at 111. 22 carries. What great balance for this Syracuse offense this afternoon. If you look at Owens, and here comes John Biscop for the point after. 41-20, the score is now with that touchdown, and the homecoming crowd is uh, starting to make their way to the parking lot. Biscuit with a kick, splits the uprights, and Syracuse is up to 22 points. 42 to 20 with 11.59 left to go. Here's the play. A little counter step, hands back, big block by uh, the offensive guard, McCummings, and also the tackle, Sims, and he breaks off the right side and gets in that end zone real quick, and he's got the speed today. He looks very good. Another look from the defensive side of things. And there's the trap by the guard. 69 comes through, that's Bernard, the, the left tackle pulling around the lead up into the hole, and the speed of Michael Owens is evident as he gets in the end zone and beats everybody. Well, this is an offensive line that's taken a lot of heat lately because they've allowed their quarterback to get sacked about 16 times in three weeks. Today, nothing of the sort, and they're clearing out holes for Dwayne Kinnon and Michael Owens to the order of close to 200 yards rushing this afternoon, and they've got Syracuse out on top here, 42 to 20. Biscuit getting set to kick. A day that has gotten grayer and colder, especially from the standpoint of the home fans. They had expected to see something really special out of their team this afternoon. Rutgers came in, two, two ties. They got them back on the winning track with two wins, came back with two losses, felt this was a pivotal crossroads game. But yet Syracuse is a great road team. A great road team coming into this game. In the last 15 games, Syracuse has 11 victories, three losses, and one tie on the road. But more importantly, it's evident that Syracuse got it going, and physically, they just look overpowered. And they look really much stronger than Rutgers, and especially from an offensive standpoint against the Rutgers team. They just couldn't hold up and hold the run. They found their fullback today, and they've really given him the football. Michael Owens has balanced that off in the tailback position, and Bill Shaw has delivered from the quarterback situation. So they got all three people working for him. A lot of credit to that offensive serve. Well, three yards deep will bring it out. She's up the sideline, next to the outside. A bit of excitement to the corner, and it's up to the 26-yard line. Oh, 29 yards, we've got an altercation going close to the Rutgers sideline. That stops quickly, and Rutgers comes out here offensively. We look at Owens to the sideline. Took him only three plays. The interception by George Rooks set things up. And in a minute and a half, Shar had them into the end zone again, going to Owens on the ground. Twelve interceptions this year for Scott Ernie. Twelve interceptions. The first one today, 
Took him right out of the first early scoring drive. Gave uh, Syracuse the ball. He drove down the field. He didn't come up with a score, but they got good field position. The second one leads to a touchdown and comes back to haunt you. Cliff is going to be called against the Rutgers on the return. And this will make uh, the situation even worse. We don't have to Joe Shirk backing everything up. Spot of the infraction. I believe is going to be the 26, and that'll back it up to the 13 yard line. Somewhere in the dark. We had a clip on the return team. It'll be half the distance to the goal, and it'll be first down. Marks it back to the 12 yard line. Spot of the infraction at about the 24. 11.59 left to go in the ball game. Syracuse up here 42 to 20. Into the ball game, uh, they have Randy Jackson. Actually, they're taking Jackson out of the game and bringing Scott Blanche in. And with the emerge, as, as Scott Ernie turned, trotted on the field that time, you heard some boos from the crowd. What they forget? They have not put the point after by John Biscop up on the scoreboard in the far end zone. That might have Dick McPherson mildly upset before it's all through. And that's probably the only thing that he'll be upset about here today. And that scoreboard, exactly. we understand, is broken. The referee has come over to talk to the timekeeper here. There you see, they wiped it out. Now they're coming back with a language that's not known to us as far as scoreboard is concerned. Is that Fortran or... <laughs> whatever language I didn't learn as far as computers were concerned, and... Uh, that doesn't tell you much. We can tell you that it is Syracuse 42-20. The time on the field is 11.54, and the score is 42. The score is 42. That's the Syracuse score is 42. Rutgers still stuck at 20. I tell you, we've given Mr. Shirk a lot of time on camera the last two weeks. He's really done it. <laughs> Called seven penalties in the first quarter of our game last week between Navy and Check Pitt. out if he belongs to after, will you please? <laughs> 19 penalties all told in that game, and things are starting to mount up. His job increases as the scoreboard goes nuts in the end of the uh, in the far end zone. Now he's got to go over and inform Dick McPherson what's going on. As Dick Anderson looks at him. There it is. You you drive that's the, that's what's the, happening. That's the first question you're asked in order to get into Rutgers University. That's the first <laughs> test. You have to figure that one out. <laughs> but it should say Syracuse 42, Rutgers 20. Dick McPherson questions Joe Shirk as to who will keep the time. Let's go, he said. Come on. Let's go and play. Our sentiments exactly. Scott Erty gets ready to come out over the football. The clipping penalty is Mark Rutgers back to the 12-yard line. They are 88 yards away from the end zone, and they are 22 points down on the scoreboard. Joe Shirk makes sure everybody knows what's happening. Time will be kept on the field for the remainder. Unless an electrician can do some fast work. Now they stop play again. This time, Joe Shirk will continue to consult. We'll get the watches coordinated. Now they're back to action. We think. Long conversation trying to get things back and going here. West Virginia having a big day. The week off certainly did the Mountaineers a world of good. 48-3 over Cincinnati. Major Harris back in gear through two TDs. Ran for another. Princeton playing their 1,000 team today. Here's Scott Ernie. A yard out of his own end zone. Going deep to Tibbet for Cam. Dan had a step or two on Wood, the outside linebacker, responsible for coverage down the sideline, but Ernie struck out maybe a little bit too far. It's up for Scott Ernie. He's thrown into the sun right here now, and that sun is strong, looking right down on him. They tried to get Can up the sideline, hitting him one-on-one -on -one against Wood, the outside linebacker. He had a step on him. The safety never got over that time, Bob Thompson. But the ball was there. It was going to be a big play. Overthrown, second down. A little over a minute. 11 minutes left to go in the ball game. 42-20, Syracuse on top. Ernie, back to throw again. Looking short this time. It is complete to Roberts. Roberts makes his way out over the 22-yard line. He's close to a first down. 
Whiteman making the stop of Arrow on the play as well for Syracuse. Syracuse pass defense has done an outstanding job. There you see Dan Busey. They sure have, and you don't call those linebackers as much, do you? But they're in the game, and they're playing it from inside out. Busey and Bavaro, they, mainly because they haven't been running the football. And that was their design coming into the game. They didn't want to contend with those inside linebackers, but they just haven't been able to do it, pulling the ground here with the pass. Ernie, out complete to Tyrone McQueen. Nice catch. He's driven out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Rutgers. That was a great catch by McQueen. The ball was low on the ground. He picked it up, and then... Pivoted and made yardage out of it. Here we see it. Here's the play. Queen, number five, comes back. Watch him take this right off the grass. Cuddled it. Scooped it. Got yardage. Got another first down. 20. About 19 yards on the track. He's up first and 10. Out of the 41 yard line. Scoreboard clock is out. I think there's somewhere in the order of 10 minutes left to go in the football game. Of course, there'll be plenty of stoppages here as Rutgers tries to pass the ball up the field. Joe Shirk now is talking about the 25-second clock. So the 25 We interrupt our regular program. Well, they got to move quickly here if they want to get a, get on the scoreboard and stay possibly close. Time with about eight and a half minutes to go in the football game. Syracuse leading Rutgers. Rutgers with the ball. 42-20 to score. In the fourth quarter here at Rutgers. Ernie looking to the flat. Complete to the queen of the 22. The queen surges ahead again. Walker makes the play at the 20. It's going to be a gain on the play of about close to 10. What's happened here is Syracuse playing zone, laying off the receivers. Now as the ball gets close to the end zone, the coverage will get tighter. And this is where Scott Ernie's got to be very careful with the interception. He's got to get the ball quickly to his receivers. Syracuse has been uh, giving up yardage begrudgingly inside the 20 this afternoon. Ernie over the middle, complete to Cam. Cam at the 10, breaks the tackle, into the end zone for a touchdown. What a great individual effort by Jimmy Cam. Can from about 20 yards out. Scores the touchdown at what we think is the eight-minute mark and now pulls Rutgers to within 16. It's 42-26, pending the point after. We do not see Geisler on the field yet. Well, they got to go for two because they missed the extra point back a while ago. That was a great effort by Jim can and also good effort by Scott Ernie hanging in there and finding him open. Second effort got Can into the end zone. Here we go for two. Two point conversion try. No backs in back of Ernie suggesting throw. Ernie scrambling. Looking to reverse field. Now puts it up into the end zone. Melton is there. Can is there to make the catch. Jimmy Can on the deflected pass the two-point conversion catch and that makes it 42 28 that's what it's all about huh it was well covered pressure on scott ernie as he comes out here no backs in the backfield four receivers to the right side he doesn't see anybody he's being pressured flushed out of there by lebaron again and he looks to the back side now there's he just decides to throw it up for grabs and watch this bang 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 and there's jim and 32 catches the ball Rutgers picks up Two-pointer, and they trail 42-28. Looked like he picked it right up off the shoulder pad. Gary Melton. Rutgers now pulls it within 14. There is James Can, who just pulled down a touchdown pass and the two-point conversion. What a catch off the shoulder pad of teammate Gary Melton. In the end zone, Scott Ernie just threw it up for grabs, and... That smiling individual pulled it down, and now with 8.37 remaining in the football game, Rutgers says, wait a minute, don't go to the parking lots. It's a 14-point game. And you got to remember it's the fourth period, and Rutgers in the fourth period, they're a tough team. They score a lot. Now they've got a great chore ahead of them. The biggest thing here is they've got to try and get the ball back without giving Syracuse a chance to take time off the clock and get any more points. Syracuse anticipating onside kick now with Giesler. I think it's a little too early for onside kick. Maybe squib it down the middle. Give it to Walker back at the 14. Walker up the middle. 
And he's brought down at the 30-yard line. A 16-yard return. And now Syracuse takes the field offensively once more. Up 42-28. Uh, we'll see if they try to keep it on the ground a little bit, take some time off that clock. In command, they've got the wind at their back. They just got to make some first downs here. Not give Rutgers a chance to get the ball back at any time. Now the time is going to be an estimate on most parts because with the touchdown at 8.37. Rutgers, 335 yards total offense, but look at Syracuse, 473. Here comes a handoff, it goes to Owens, stutter step into the line, and then gets upfield to about the 33-yard line. Rob Spidell making the tackle, boy, we've called his name a lot this afternoon. Spidell, Udovich, they've been in a lot of plays because Syracuse has been moving the ball on the ground. Second down and eight. Second down and actually about seven. Syracuse at the 33-yard line. Shaw, draw play, Owen, wrapped up and wrestled to the ground by Scott Miller. Good job by Miller that time. They tried to run a little delay play with the tailback Owen. Miller came down close to the right defensive tackle position to make the hit along with Marty Mays, number 65. Big third down play. Third down, long yardage. Syracuse very effective on third down plays today. Syracuse has been 9 for 12 on third down plays this afternoon. Third down and 7 coming up now. Get the motion. A little over six and a half minutes left to go on the game. Shaw looking upfield, finds a man complete. That is Gendy, is tight end. Got the first down, and Syracuse converts third to first once again. Good job. Offensive line, good protection, and they really did a nice job of protecting, giving him a chance. Gendy, the big tight end. Chris Gedney, red-shirted freshman. Here he comes, watching number 84. He'll curl up in the middle, right in the middle, in between the linebackers. First down. Big target. 6 5 2 33. Syracuse 42 28 over Rutgers. Scoreboard clock is out. Estimated time left a little over six minutes. Shaw on the option. Pitches to Owens. Bubbled the ball momentarily. Before he could cross and get upfield, Bob Spidell is in to make the tie. Get that ball in bounds. They don't want to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Big play by Spidell making the hit. But again, Syracuse controlling the football, coming up with the third down conversions. Dick Anderson knows he wants that football back so bad. Team down by 14. Two yards, Syracuse, two yards shy of midfield. Homecoming crowd may have hit to the exits a little bit early. Now they say about seven minutes left. Shaw. There's a reverse to Carpenter. Carpenter cutting up field, catches a block. At the 45, and gets driven out of bounds at the 42-yard line. That uh, driven out of bounds on the play. John, John Blanton, the quarterback number 22, came up to make the play, but that's a play they have in their arsenal with the speed they have on the, the flanks with Moore and uh, Carpenter. They wait for the right time to call it. That time they come off the option, pitch it back at seven. Rob Carpenter, who's had a great day today, made the first down. 12-yard run by Carpenter. Gets the first down at the Rutgers 40-yard line. Shaw has Carpenter and Gedney split wide to the top side. To the bottom, that's Moore. And off Owen. Owen sandwiched at the line of split. Driven back there. Looks like Marty Mays is the first man in. Marty Mays has had a great day today. Playing off the center, playing in the nose position. He's done a great job of hanging in there. He's not big, but he's quick and he reads well. And Boston College making a charge with six minutes to go, trailing 27-24. Three minutes left to go in Boston. Boston, there's six minutes left to go here at Rutgers. It's a trot in the country for West Virginia, 62-3 over Cincinnati in the fourth quarter at Morgantown. Shaw on second and eight. Draw, draw play to Owens. Owens dances outside, has the first down and more. Brought down by Bouchard and Mays at the 26-yard line. 
It's a gain of 15 for Michael Owens, who's up over 130 yards rushing. And they say, we mentioned it earlier, he makes people miss. And watch this as he takes this beautiful execution of the draw, good blocking up front. And the line, they steer blockers. Here he is. Look at this little move right there. People fall by the wayside. He falls forward for another first down, and Syracuse is doing what they have to do at this point in the game, controlling the football. Michael Owens, big dip. Two touchdowns for him, two touchdowns for Rob Carpenter, four touchdown passes for Bill Shar this afternoon. Syracuse leading 42-28 on first down. Here comes the fullback, Dwayne Kim. Kimmon set down by Spidell, also Bouchard in on the play for Rutgers. We talked about his success this score this afternoon. Kimmon up over 80 yards. Okay, trying to keep it going. Second down and seven. Shar, a little over five minutes left to go in the ball game. Gives it to Owen. Owen surges ahead to the 20. We're getting estimated time because the scoreboard clock is out as Owen heads back. Looks like he's in on the tackle. I think we've got to talk some more about Bill Shar. We mentioned how he came into this ball game. Um, a lot of criticism about his play. Had a tough time. Got hurt a little bit last year. He came last week against Penn State. He came in here today and he has done the job. He's executed. He's thrown the ball well. Run the offense. Lots of confidence. And I think it uh, proves that you just don't give up on somebody like that. They had confidence enough to bring him back today. I think it's going to be a big boost for him for the rest of the season. Third and four. Syracuse and the Rutgers 20. Shaw. Quarterback draw. Has the first down. Has a touchdown. Bill Shaw. It falls in five touchdowns on the afternoon. Takes it in from 20 yards out. Retribution. What a day for that young man. He had his first six passes on the afternoon. He said, don't step on the mouthpiece. Guys, that'd be happy young guy. 48 to 20. You called it. This is a quarterback throw. One, two, he stops, lets the blocking take place up front. Flannery makes the block for him up front. He just steers around the... The linebackers and finds that end zone. Bill Shar, junior out of Grande, New York. 48-28 the score is now as Biscuit gets set to kick to make it 49 out of the hold of Mark McDonald. Here comes the kick. It splits the uprights beautifully. With a little over four minutes left to go in the football game, it's Syracuse leading by 21. We now pause for a word from your local station. And a lot of people who probably aren't very hostile with homecoming. Including that man, Dick McPherson, is pretty happy at the way things have turned out. There's four minutes and 30 seconds left in this football game, we've been officially told, as the scoreboard clock is out. Dick Anderson not too pleased with the turn of events. His team came in here needing a victory to break a 2-2-2 deadlock of wins, ties, and losses. He now looks at his final four games of the season, looking at 2 3 and two. Falling behind in the Lambert Trophy situation and looking at a year in which really Rutgers was building forward to. Here's Vista with the kick. Melton is back to receive and it is 0-2. Heads up the sideline. Gets a nice return. He's had a couple this afternoon. 34.